Hearts has made pawns of opposing ball carriers. Today, they match up against a King Longhorn, who they hope to keep in check. The entire state is painted purple. They come early to party. They hope to party afterwards late. And they come by every form of transportation. The main event in Manhattan, Kansas, is their fourth ranked football team. And our matchup, the fourth ranked Wildcats of Kansas State home to the Longhorns of Texas. Hi everybody, I'm Brad Messler and we welcome you to Manhattan where today Kansas State has not played anybody, quite frankly, at this point. They're 2-0 on the season. Two lopsided wins. They meet a Texas team still reeling a bit from their loss last week to UCLA. And Gary Danielson, also Texas has to come in. Richard Walton got hurt last week. They come in with a big question mark at quarterback. His name is Major Applewhite. He's only played 18 plays, and he's coming to this game as the question mark. But Brady can do that question mark into a positive by making the easy plays. Catching the snap from the center, handing the ball off. And he's got an exclamation point to hand that ball off to and Ricky Williams for Texas to win. Ricky Williams has to carry the ball at least 30 times in this game. Problem for Ricky Williams, there's a Kansas State defense that will punctuate you over on the other <laughs> side. they got some punctuation marks, don't they? They've got the best linebacking crew in the college. Seminole, Oaks, and Kelly. This defense will disrupt you. They'll clean up the mess, and then they'll mop up whatever is left. This is one of the outstanding defenses in college football. Should be a great matchup. We've got it coming up. Kansas State and Texas next. Welcome to our college football studios in New York. I'm John Saunders. Out to your game in just a moment, but first an update of some scores. NC State coming off that win against Florida State. Trail this one 26 to nothing. They're fighting back. Rutgers, no match for Syracuse, 70 to 14. Donovan McNabb with another outstanding day. And Eastern Michigan hands Michigan their first win, 59 to 20. We'll see you at halftime right now. Out to your game. Sold out KSU Stadium at Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas. Texas won the toss and deferred, so Kansas State will get their hands on it first. The Longhorns off to a one and one start, and right now are giving up 533 and a half yards a game. Kansas State, on the other hand, a two and zero start. They've scored more points than anybody in the country, and they have won nine games in each of the last five seasons, and that's a very elite list that they join. Mac Brown, his first year as head man in Texas successful years in Chapel Hill with North Carolina. Bill Snyder in his 10th season has probably done the biggest reclamation job in the history of college football in this city. Uh, you could drop the probably. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Stockton's got it teed up for the Longhorns. Back deep, David Allen, Gerald Neesman awaits and we're underway from Manhattan and Neesman six yards deep will not bring it out. So Kansas State's offense will work for the first time today from its own 20-yard line. As we take a look at the Chili starting lineup, first for Kansas State, the big ones up front, Ryan Young, a potential first-round draft choice at tackle with Martin Cummins, Hanley, and Stevenson. In the receiver core, they haven't had to throw much. Darnell McDonald has seven catches to lead the club. Burnett, the other wide out, and Swift's a good tight end. And in the backfield, Eric Hickson closing in on the all-time school record for rushing. Goolsby is his lead man. And Michael Bishop right there is the man at the controls, and he is very, very entertaining to watch. First down, Kansas State. On the eye. And it's Hickson who's hit immediately. Casey Hampton and company close the door along with Dusty Renfro as we take a look at the Longhorn defense. Hampton was in on that tackle. Humphrey Woodard and Kelly round out the front four. A great job last week by DeAndre Lewis who had 14 tackles in the game we saw against UCLA. Renfro and Babineau, the other two backers. A very inexperienced secondary. McGowan's one of three back there. And Holmes, Jammer, and Walker, they are still concerned about that group, Gary. Yep. And they've continued to shuffle them around trying to fight the right, uh, find the right combination. Yeah, uh, Tony Holmes is back at corner after starting the season at corner, moving to strong safety last week, and now back to corner. So some early frustration for Kansas State. They lose a yard, and then they're confused with their offensive alignment. They'll take a timeout. We're just underway. We'll be right back.
strong wind in Manhattan, strong. Kansas. And I'll tell you how strong. It looks like a two-club. Oh, I'm sorry. We're still in the summer. There just is a heavy wind. So so windy that uh, we lost a couple post-it notes already. Yep, up here. we got to have something more than post-it notes. And it's going to be right to left on your screen. So Kansas State going right into it. Michael Won't Bishop. that guy, will it? Not really. He's got some pretty good zip on the football. Second down and a long 10. And Bishop with the audible at the line. Goolsby's a single setback in a two tight end formation. He'll take off on his own. He does a lot of this, and he's very successful at it. Bishop puts a shoulder down, took a big hit at the 26-yard line. Nice hit by Joe Walker. They put a few of those on Michael Bishop. He won't forget them until next week sometime. It'll bring up third down and a long four. Well, Michael Bishop is similar to what Texas saw a week ago in Cade McNown. Michael's probably a couple steps faster, throws the ball a little harder. I don't know if he is quite the, the finisher that uh, Cade is in, within the offense, but I think Michael Bishop will do more things outside of the offense by design, like that play right there. Back to two wide out set. High backfield play action. He's going to take off again on a quarterback. First down marker, yes. Out to the 37 yard line. The 11 yard pickup, first down, Kansas State. Michael Bishop is gyrating and talking right into the bench of Texas. Of course, he came out of Texas. Big Texas fan coming out of high school and junior college. A play-action quarterback draw. You don't see a lot of that. Dusty Renfro, the middle linebacker, came across. But as he got up, he gave a mouthful and an earful to Texas. Well, that's a tremendous amount of respect you have for your quarterback's running ability when it's a play fake and a quarterback right. draw all and together. I have not seen a lot of that. Nope. A design for a special athlete. That's what Snyder has done here. You saw the career numbers rushing for Bishop. Now his first throw is complete. It's a first down. Down Al McDonald. Out of bounds to pick up the 14. So Kansas State's high-powered offense in gear here in the opening moments. Well, you can see what Kansas State does. Establish Bishop inside and then pick on the weakness of the uh, defense for Texas, the corner play. There's, you know, the Fins have been passed around. This pass defense for Texas has weak corners, and you will see a lot of anticipation of throwing the ball at those guys in this game by Michael Bishop. Now it's a three wide out group, and for all practical purposes, an empty backfield. Bishop the quick slam. He hit Darnell McDonald right between the eight and the zero, but he dropped it. Darnell McDonald. Incomplete. Looks like Aaron Humphrey might have been off sides on the play, though. Flag down, and there it is down on the bottom of your screen. Humphrey, who was so aggressive last week against Cade McNabb and had an excellent game with the penalty. Give me an idea of how effective Humphrey was. Uh, not counting his hurries in the game when he did a great job of rushing Cade McNown and flashing him out of the pocket, but he also had six tackles in that game. The rest of the defensive line combined only had five. five yeah. <laughs> not a good sign. Good no. game for Aaron, bad sign for the rest of that group. It is first and five right here after the penalty. Swift the tight end in the stand-up position, a la the Hawkeyes of Iowa from where Bill Snyder came as offensive coordinator. Here's Hickson. And he's got a first down. And one of the supposed weaknesses on this offensive line pulls around, gets in front of the play, and then finally fits on someone. That's what they're telling those tackles. Keep running, keep running until you find someone. Hopefully it'll be a defensive back. That's a good sign. Well, a Kansas State team that's been scoring at more than a point a minute in their first two games. And here at the 12.43 mark, they've got their first six. Martin Gramatica to try to make it seven and does. 80-yard march for the Wildcats, capped by Hickson from 44 yards out. It's 7 other. See sports presentation of college football, brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. By Sears, come see the many sides of Sears. And by Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. 
Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson back with you in Manhattan, Kansas, where the Jayhawks, or the Jayhawks, boy, I guess shot saying that here, <laughs> where the Wildcats have already scored seven on yeah. an 80-yard drive. He's the other guy, but not the uh, point out if there is anything on you. Seven nothing, dramatic hit a kick. High and short kick. They recovered one of these last week when it wasn't fielded by the opposition. This one is one of the up men of Texas takes it and got it out near the 25-yard line. DeAndre Lewis fielded that kick. Check out Quentin Jammer, number six right here. He's the guy who ends up getting blocked on this play. He does not react quick enough. Come on up, come on up, come on up. By the time he gets up there, it's too late. He overruns the play and turns a nice 10-yarder into a touchdown. Those safeties are so important to read the blocking scheme, come up there and play. Gary said here's a quarterback who will be taking his 18th snap ever. That's inexperience. At a spot you don't want inexperience. Richard Walton out with a broken bone in his throwing hand that we saw a week ago against UCLA. So here's Major Applewhite and the Longhorns. From the 25, Ricky Williams in motion from the backfield. May have been a jump by Kansas State. And he delivers the completion out to the 31-yard line to Derek Lewis, his tight end. Let's check the Chile starting lineup for Texas. Octavius Bishop, a mammoth left tackle, have to try to protect the youngsters' backside, along with Raisler, Gascamp, Adams, and Humphrey. Kwame Cavill had a career game last week against UCLA with McGarity and Derek Lewis, who just made that last catch. And in the backfield, Major Applewhite, the young fellow who's taken over the controls and has completed his first pass. The two Rickies with him in the backfield, Brown and Williams. You know, Brad, as a young quarterback, a new quarterback, when you get in there, you know the eyes of your football team are on you. Now, let's forget about how tall he is. I don't care if he's a five foot two. You don't have to dunk the ball when you're a quarterback. You have to throw the ball. And Major Applewhite will try to first in get calm himself, then try to win over his team by his calmness, and then lastly, his offensive coordinator, so he gets some good plays. Interesting here, they could have gotten almost as much yardage on the penalty. They took the throw, I think, to give the youngster some confidence that he completed his first pass. And, and he was hot in warm-ups. He made all the easy throws. Second down, a long three. Here's a toss to Ricky Williams, and he's knocked down for a loss, and it's Darren Howard, who was offside on the last play, who makes the stop as we take a look at the defense of Kansas State, and they're a good group. You just saw Howard make that play. He had 11 sacks a year ago. McIntosh, Rowan, Bobby, uh, Joe Bob Clements round out the front four. Leading tackler, Jeff Kelly. And Oaks and Simino, all three are Butkus finalists. And in the secondary, and it's a good one, always is, it seems. Jared Cooper had a touchdown last week. Carter Chapman and Niesman round out a very good Kansas State Wildcats secondary. Third down and four. That secondary might get some work here. The reason number 11's taken the snaps at quarterback for Texas, if you didn't see our game a week ago, Texas and UCLA, let's take you back. Last week, Richard Walton, the senior, and you see crunched on that throw, and his hand fought the turf under him. He tried one more pass after that, Gary, he tried yeah, to gut it out. He did, he threw one more ball, but you can see he tried to brace himself fell right on that wrist and uh, he threw one more wobbler here there he is right there he came to the game today I saw him kind of shadowing major throughout the whole warm-ups but uh, I just don't feel that the reason if Texas loses this game is going to be because of their quarterback I, I really think he will calm down and play a good game he's been preparing for this type of game his whole life he went to 25 football <laughs> camps when he was a youngster getting ready and you don't get recruited at a place like Texas and uh, John Makovic, if you're not accomplished at throwing the football, and this guy is accomplished at throwing the football, I was impressed with him last week when I watched him in, in warm-ups before the game, and I think he will not be the wink link in this football team today. Last week he went three for five in mop-up duty after Walton went out with the injury. And now making his first start. It's a dream job you hope doesn't turn into a nightmare, I guess. Getting your chance to start a quarterback. Third down and four after the timeout. And now the officials have to put the ball back at the proper line of scrimmage. Either kicked or blown by the wind. And now we're all set. Ricky Williams and Ricky Brown, a dual set behind Applewhite. Crowd deafening already for the defense. 
points, and we're just in the first quarter. Here they come after him. Throws on the run and throws a shot complete for a first down out to Ricky Brown, the fullback. Playing pretty cool so far. Mike Stoops, the coordinator for this Kansas City, D a Kansas State defense, called the lynch mob, will not sit back and just let things happen. They will continue to bring people. We talked to him yesterday. He said, we will try to go through the gaps. We will try to make plays early in the game. And we just won't sit back. First down, the 37-yard line. Ricky Williams, boy, they've got his number. Jeff Kelly made first contact, and they've got help from a lot of his friends. He's a marked man today. Yeah, you're talking about a big-time defense. I mean, th this team has been told, no matter what they said publicly, this defense for Kansas State has been told, if they hold Ricky to under 100 yards, they will win the game. You know, they're not saying a lot. They didn't say that publicly, but a few guys let it leak out. So there's the target. He's the exclamation point, but he's the target. Second down and 10. Applewhite down the middle. That's complete to the 41 yard line. And Kwame Cavill, the big target, makes the catch in some traffic. It'll bring up third down and a long six yet to go. 10.35 to go first quarter, 7-0 Kansas State. Kwame Cavill, they're really happy with how he's come along as a receiver. Came to Texas actually as a linebacker, defensive back type of player. They had so many injuries last year at receiver early in the season. They moved into offense, and it's been a good move. Third down and six. Kansas State doesn't give up much on third down conversions to anybody. Here they come after Applewhite. On the run. Throws behind McGarity. It would have been a first down near midfield. He threw that one in the turf, and Texas will there kick it away. Applewhite had to get out of the pocket again because inside the linebackers came. Kelly and Simino both stunning up the middle. The Texas, the big Texas offensive line could not handle it. And Applewhite had to get out of the pocket. Look out for this guy. Already two long punt returns for touchdowns. And needs just five yards to break the all-time punt return yardage record. And you have an opportunity to do it because it's downwind. This ball should travel far enough to outrun the coverage. Oh, man, did Stockton hit this thing all the way to the five. Allen to the 15. Cuts outside. Across the 30, great return. 27-yard punt return by David Allen as set Kansas State's offense up at the 31-yard line when we come back. Let's take a look at this week's Marriott Moments. Remember back to the Tostinos Fiesta Bowl of a year ago against Syracuse. Kansas State and Nebraska is what we've got here. And this was a pass that Michael Bishop would love to have gotten back. Nebraska the only blemish on the mark of Kansas State last year. They went 11-1 and, and they still got to get by that team this year. And it's in mid-November instead of early in the season. coming up and uh, they've got a countdown to that already Gary don't 56 they? game with well, 56 days today is 55 days right yep before they meet Nebraska well, and Hickson pick up of about three how things have changed here in Manhattan used to be at Kansas State you try to forget that date now they got it a red letter day <laughs> 56 more days to that day game second down seven second down at seven Bill Snyder already the Winning his coach in school history. He's coached in more games, 107 and one more, 68 than anybody else that's ever been here. And put this program on the map. Here's Goolsby, the fullback. And Texas does a nice job swarming around him defensively, led by middle linebacker Dusty Renfro and Casey Hampton, big number 64 there on the inside. It's going to bring up a third down. Mac Brown told me that the inside of that defense had done a good job last week as you look at the Big 12 records since 93. And that, anytime you see Kansas State up there with those names, you know something good has happened. Not bad. receivers. Bishop loads it and goes complete for a first down. Across 
to 45. Darnell McDonald again. Pick up of eight in front of Tony Holmes, the cornerback. Of course, Darnell McDonald had that big coming out party in the Fiesta Bowl last year. He was tackled by number 31. Against Syracuse. It was also a huge coming out party, I think, for Michael Bishop. Everybody had heard about Michael Bishop, but the improvement he made, as Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday, from the last game until the bowl game was huge. First down, just outside their own 45-yard line. Kansas State by a touchdown. 8.15 left in the first quarter. Bishop, quarterback draw again. Dancing around the middle. Got positive yardage across midfield of the 49. Give him five. He's got some quick feet. Well, you, you can see already that Bill Snyder's game plan emerging. I think he really wants to showcase Michael Bishop in this football game. I mean, they don't want to talk about the Heisman thing here, and they know they're playing against Ricky Williams, but so far the game plan has been set up for Michael Bishop. I think that's the third quarterback draw of the game. And short passes, second medium here. Let's see what they do. He'll give it off to Hickson. Broke one tackle, a second. He might have a first down. Boy, he's bouncing off people today. Broke some tackles on the touchdown run, and there, got it near the 44-yard line. This is very similar to the way the Texas defense started out last week against UCLA. Not fitting their tackles, missing plays they should think, overrunning plays, and, and giving up big plays because of that. They settled down in the second half, but uh, you don't want to wait too long when you're playing these quality teams. You just get blown out of the game. And they're going to measure. Michael Bishop says first down. And Tom Ehlers, our referee, agrees. First down, Kansas State. Already with a touchdown lead. Bill comes off as the hardworking, which he is, conservative, <laughs> which he isn't. This offense is probably as wide open as any offense in college football. It's a huge playbook, and they'll be they'll run anything. I mean, you, you never know what angle they're coming from on this defense, uh, this offense. Excuse me. David Allen's checked into the backfield now at the tailback spot after Hickson got that first down. Quick snap, and here's Allen, the great punt return. Texas says they have it. They do. Quentin Jammer, who had a fumble recovery and an interception last week, has a fumble recovery here. The reason David Allen does not see a lot of snaps for this offense is because of this right here. He's a talented sophomore, but he makes mistakes. He makes mistakes with blocking, and now he turns the ball over. Aaron Humphrey's the guy that got the turnover right there. Quentin Jammer ended up with it, but Aaron Humphrey made the play, but that was not much of a play. That ball should have been held on to it. You wonder if you'll see much more of Allen with Aaron Dixon as the solid 60 year senior. So first down, Texas after the turnover. Longhorns from their 38 yard line. Ricky Brown, the fullback, in motion. And Ricky Williams, off right tackle, flags down. And right in the gate of holding. It's in the middle of the pile. First time that Ricky Williams has gotten a little bit of breathing room. Picked up seven. While we look at the flag, let's check in with John Saunders in our New York studio. Brad, time now for the Burger King update. Ohio State, a little fake out here. Everyone gets fooled, including the cameraman, Michael Wiley. Goes 21 yards for the touchdown. The Buckeyes leading it 7-0. Brad. All right, John, same score here. Kansas State on a long touchdown run of their opening drive. And moments ago, they had a pretty good drive going, too, before the fumble. The penalty walked off against Texas now. We'll back it up to the 30-yard line. Talking to Mac yesterday, I said, what'd you tell the guys at halftime after it looked embarrassing like a year ago? He said, whatever you guys did in the first half, do it differently in the second half. <laughs> said, I didn't get too fancy with it. They were down 35-3 to to UCLA last week and came back and made it a fairly respectable game. Applewhite play action. He from behind, throws high, intended for Cavill. And this is the first time Applewhite's going to have to scrape himself off the turf. Darren Howard... And Joe Bob Clements, the two defensive ends, converge back there. They're known as the Sox. Simino, Oates, and Kelly. Three linebackers. One, two, and three right out here. They move around this football field, make people 
account for them, and they move so well. The slowest, Kelly, number eight, the middle linebacker, is a 4 6 4 <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an indication of where they are. Second down and 18. Brooks is always out here at the side, kind of tilts it to the side. Applewhite, here comes Howard again. They throw that way to Ricky Williams. The six-yard line got about six of it back. It's still going to be third down and very long coming up. So far, the matchup that I think Texas felt good about: Octavius Bishop, their best lineman, blocking the best lineman for Kansas State, Darren Howard, has not been solid. He's been running around. Howard has the corner and putting pressure on Applewhite. That's what's watch it because that is a key matchup for this Texas offense. That speed right now is killing Octavius Bishop. Shotgun, third down 12. Yeah, Howard lined up inside this time as a tackle in this nickel rush pack. Four wide outs for Applewhite. Almost dropped the snap. Buys himself a little time, long sideline pass to McGarity, and he had his hands on it, but he's knocked out of bounds by Jeremetrius Butler, and it's incomplete. That was not a bad throw and a near completion. Jeremetrius did exactly what you teach a corner to do. Don't take the first move. Stay with him and keep running. Now, if you get beat, look at your man. When he puts his hands up, turn around. Yeah, he got away with one there, but he actually he got his hand on the ball, and that was enough to do it. you got to turn around and see the wall. Kansas State's a great kick-blocking team, too, not to mention Allen on the other end is a return man. No problem here, though. Stockton hits another high one. Allen might have another chance here from the 14. Stumbles a bit on his own. Got almost 10 on the return out near the 24-yard line. Return by number 32, David Go behind the scenes of a nightly sports show where the real-life stories happen. Don't miss the premiere of Sports Night. It's coming up Tuesday, 9.30, 8.30 Central Time, right after the season premiere of Spin City on ABC. Sports afternoon here. Major Applewhite making his first start as a collegiate quarterback and has not played too badly so far. His team down a touchdown here in the first quarter. And here's his counterpart, Michael Bishop. First down, Kansas State to 24. Hickson weaves inside, got out near the 30. Taken off his feet by DeAndre Lewis, but he got six. Remember a few years back, Brad, when that Dan Conley from he Syracuse was, was one of those first guys that was a six-year six player. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like uh, if you don't last six years, you're not taking advantage of all the scholarship money you can get. You know, seems like they're on every team now. Hickson missed all of 96 with a broken leg and had been granted an extra year of eligibility. He's behind Goolsby. There's Hickson, number 24. Second down and four. Michael Bishop looks to be changing things up at the line. Drops and delivers out to McDonald again. And that one's just easy picking so far today, it seems like, in front of Tony Holmes, the quarterback again. The rap on Michael Bishop is that he's not a high percentage completion thrower. But you know, this offense really isn't built up for him to be a 65% thrower. They throw the ball downfield. But from what I saw of him yesterday and Thursday in practice and what I see of him today, he has markedly improved in that area. He's gone three times to McDonald, and McDonald has caught all three of them, including that one for a first down at the 39. Well, McDonald's going to have a day here. <laughs> I don't know if he's got a farm, but he's got three catches. Hickson. Taken down by Quentin Jammer and Dusty Renfro, but not before he got out near the 45-yard line. Under five minutes in the quarter. 7-0. The Wildcats in front. On a 10-game winning streak. Their longest winning streak for this program since 1910. Gain of five on the play. Second down five. 44-yard line. Hickson shared time his first couple of years in the backfield with Mike Lawrence, who's the school's all-time rushing leader, and now he's got his sights set on Mike's career rushing mark here. Off to a good start today. Second down and four. Just inside the 45-yard line. Bishop pumps once, wants to go deep on the sideline to McDonald. Broken up. I think it hit Quentin Jammer in a helmet, but he'll take it however he can break it up. See, Michael Bishop just made the cardinal sin mistake that you make as a quarterback. When you do the out and up to the outside, when you're looking to his right, the defense's left, 
Yeah, you might beat the corner, but the free Third safety at that time, Quentin Boy, Jammer, Boy, is also looking to his left. The ball wobbles a bit, a little bit underthrown, and Quentin Jammer comes over and makes the play. Guy in the middle of the field right there is able to come. You know, the field's only 53 yards, and back when I played, they had those guys that couldn't really cover that much yardage, but nowadays, those free safeties eat up those 53 yards from the middle of the field to the out. Had that one not quacked its way downfield, it still might have been completed. Bishop now on the run and taken out of bounds at the 47 yard line, a couple yards short of the first down. That was another called play that time. That was a quarterback draw. 50 yard line, you wonder if Snowman. Yeah, you wonder if it gets into the wind. I don't think they can do that far. I, think, I just think they're going to punt this ball. See him come out. He's got great feet. No question yet, but the Texas defense is playing that quarterback draw right now. Texas better get out there on their punt return team. There's got to be flags on the field. There's too many people out on the field. Too many men on the field. That'll be the first down. Boy, that's just going to kill you. Granted, there was some indecision by Kansas State whether they're going to try a long field goal or punt it, but the punt return team, Matt Brown's not going to be happy about because they never got on the field. The defense never got off, and their flags. Well. You know, Brett, Mac Brown's going to be unhappy, but he should be unhappy with his staff in this instance. I mean, they had the long field to come across. Kansas State had the short sideline, so they waited and waited and then hurried their team on. When Texas tried to match up, they had a longer run. Mm -hmm. The wise move for the Texas staff in that, in that point would have been to just keep their defense out there. And once the decision was made by Kansas State and Bill Schneider, they hustled out there and yes, they were they at the did. line of scrimmage and set. So they did a great job Bill in Snyder's, getting their special team out there. Bill Snyder stole a first down. I agree. Illegal substitution on the receiving team. Five yards from the previous spot. First down. There it is. You see on the top of your screen here, there they come in. Guys are still running in. And on the far right of the screen, just outside, guys hadn't got off the field. That was the problem. They had too many men. An illegal substitution. Kansas State kind of quick kicks it there. That's all first they had to do. Kansas State, 49 yard line. So a first down inside the Texas 49 now. The drive stays alive. And as Gary said, a stolen first down. Hickson trying to bounce out of the pile again. This time he won't. Tony Holmes from the secondary holding on on top. Short gain. Second down and nine coming up. Just over three minutes left first quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, our ABC crew with you from Manhattan, Kansas. A packed house, about 42,000. They're going to add several thousand seats to the stadium on the far side and put in more sky boxes. They'll be up over 50,000 next year, and uh, every ticket sold, and everybody in purple. They love this team. This is a happening in this part of the state on a Saturday afternoon. Here's the slant, complete, close to a first down to Gavin Paris. Marcus Wilkins made the tackle. Looks like he's a little bit short of the first down. He was tackled by number 45, Marcus Wilkins. Coming up next Saturday on ABC Sports, a college football doubleheader in game one, except on the West Coast. You'll see Michigan State against Michigan, or Wake Forest and Clemson. Then stay tuned at 3.30 Eastern. USC takes on Florida State. And we'll be in Nebraska for the Cornhuskers and the Huskies. Check the local listing for the game in your area or what you might be able to get on pay-per-view. Here's Michael Bishop on the run. First down, and a bunch more down the sideline, run out of bounds. At about the 24-yard line by Dusty Renfro, but he got 15, and he's still John with the Texas sideline. Man, man. You talk about a dimension of a quarterback. He's faster than Cade McNown. This is the fifth rush of the game. They've all been designed. Dusty Renfro is just now coming into your screen right there. He's spying the quarterback, but he needs a, I don't know, a gun Binoculars. or something. Yeah, it is. <laughs> He can smile all he wants. This guy just outruns him. 39 yards already. <laughs> Bishop, as we showed you earlier, at 556 yards rushing and nine touchdowns last year. There's the first down story. Oof, that's pretty bleak again for Texas. And they've kept the ball out of Ricky Williams' hand because of that. Have they ever? Kansas State has made no mistakes with the exception of David Allen's fumble. Bishop trying to throw that one and it's swatted down. 
Nice job defensively by Cedric Woodard, who got a big hand in the way. Pass was batted down by number 50, Cedric Woodard. Second down, 10. That's what Texas Boy, needs is on. some good play out of their defensive line other than Humphrey. Yes, you're exactly right. And that was a good play up front. But, you know, it, it's fun to watch the maturation of a young quarterback. Uh, Michael Bishop, they said last year when he was so, so good last year, an 11-1 record, he was playing at about a 5 on a 10 scale. Mm -hmm. Now they said he's at a 7.5. They hope by the end of the year he'll be up about a 9. I want to do one of those 9. That's right. Here's a quick slam. And down, caught twice. Still going first and goal. You talk about staying with the pass. Watch McDonald on this one. There he is out here. He's going to come inside a little slant pass. And you know what you like about the quarterback right here? The quarterback's coming in. I mean, the receiver's coming in on a slant. The quarterback who has a huge arm, you don't want to throw a bullet. You want to kind of ease it in there. I tell young quarterbacks, when receivers running at you, throw him a sponge. When he's running away from you, throw him a rock. <laughs> You know what I mean? Guys? They're a little that, different, aren't they? Exactly I like that. He threw him a sponge there. He just kind of engulfed it. And he squeezed every ounce of water out of it. You can see in the red zone, they're nearly unstoppable. First and goal at the five. About the only thing that has stopped them this year has been penalty flags. 14 of them last week in their lopsided win. That was one thing Bill Snyder wasn't happy about. Delay a game. We'll back them up to a first and goal at the 10 now. That's the only flaw they could find, really, in uh, their two victories. Their opener, they beat Indiana State 66 to nothing, and then 73 to 7 last week over Northern Illinois. But that was the black mark on uh, their yeah. performance, the 14 penalties. And, and Bill was really frank uh, with us, and he said with this team by telling them the, the first two games, there's no way they were going to lose. I mean, if they just go out there and play them as exhibition games and get ready for this game, looks like they're ready for this game. First and goal of the 10. Here's some option. Trying to pitch it. Fumble and covered by McCowan. He just flat took it away from Michael Bishop. That's being in the right place at the right time. The strong safety makes a big play. You know, we talked about the Kansas State staff stealing a first down. Well, here, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, stole one. Safety blitz by McCowan, number seven. The right call at the right time. That's why those coaches spend those 16-hour days there. <laughs> Coming from the corner right here, number seven. He's got the perfect call on at the right time. Bishop does not account for the strong safety. Surprise them, and they get their second turnover. That is a huge play by the Texas staff. So that stops another would-be scoring march by Kansas State. Let's see if Texas can capitalize. They didn't on Clinton Jammer's fumble recovery earlier. Now they work a little 19-yard line. Big pile up, the umpire says Wildcats. Texas gave it right back to it. It happened so quick, you wonder how good the snap was this time. Jared Cooper is the guy, nope, he's got it, he's got it clean. Puts the helmet, Jeff Kelly puts his helmet right on the ball, and Jared Cooper comes up with the fumble recover. Mark Simino also was right there, had it for a bit, and then Cooper ended up with it. Mac keeps writing on that yeah, pad. He's, he's going to have a dent in his pants. He's going to need another. He's either going to need another pad or another big pad. <laughs> back in the pocket it goes, and back to the offensive line of scrimmage go the Wildcats at the 23-yard line. So they get it right back, just under a minute left in the first quarter from the shotgun. They play fake it to Hickson, and Bishop goes on his own yeah, that ain't for about two. <laughs> Aaron Humphrey said, now wait a second, I played against Caden McNown last week, and coaches said, you're going to carry the ball more than Cade McNown, so I'm going to just stay at home and make sure that you're going over for Gatorade before I start running over for the ball. <laughs> it is a hot day. There'll be some of that consumed today, among other things they'll consume here in Manhattan. It's uh, supposed to be probably 87 degrees by halftime. Second down and eight. Here's the option off the play. Fake the pitch to Hickson, the trail man. Hickson got it down to the five-yard line. Cartwheeled there by Jammer. But he's got it first and goal, a pickup, a, pick a 16. 
Well, they're not shy about running that option play. They ran it for a fumble the play before. This time they come back. Ron Hudson and Bill Snyder dial it up again from shotgun. Works all the way down to the five-yard line. How about Eric? Ten yards of pop so far. Of course, he had a 44-yard touchdown in there. Eight for 81 already. And after the first quarter, I mean, I don't know if I've seen much dominance. Well, I guess I have. 66 <laughs> That's the end of one here, though. They'll move it down to the other end where it'll be first and goal at the five. We've played one quarter in fourth-ranked Kansas State, leading Texas 7-0. Start the second quarter, Kansas State 7-0. Time for our AFLAC trivia question this week. Kansas State's athletic teams are nicknamed the Wildcats. What's the nickname of the town here? And they have helped put this town on the map with their football program. We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. First and goal at the five. Bishop hands off to Hickson. It's bounced around on the inside. Renfro is there again after a pickup of about two. Well, you know the Texas defense and Kyle Reese, their defensive coordinator right now, is going to try to dial up something and keep an eye on the quarterback, Bishop. I would assume Bishop will have this ball outside the pocket, running, look for some type of option or rollout, and let's see how the Texas defense tries to adjust to that. We've also seen Bishop on a quarterback draw several times already today. Second and goal at the three. One-on-one on, one on the top also. Here he is on the option. Keeps it. Goes down for a loss. Texas played it beautifully. They knew it was coming just like Gary did. Sure did. And, and you know what happened that time? They put their down line in their tackles. It was Cedric Wooded on an outside rush. Everybody took an outside gap that time. If Kansas State would have dialed inside, they would have been right. Everybody goes like this to the outside and says, if you're going to run outside, you're going to have trouble. Everybody goes outside, takes an outside gap, boom. There's the big play. Nice call by the defense. Only takes one guy to miss his block, and Woodard made it pay as he got by Brian Hanley. And now it's third and goal, back at the seven. Bishop throwing a fade to the corner to McDonald. And he caught it. Touchdown. <laughs> Penalty marker down, but it's going to be interference on Walker. This one will stand. Seven-yard scoring toss. See, I, I don't know. I, I just wonder why a defensive staff, I know you want to go bump and run, but why you put a guy out there all by himself, no help when you've got a mismatch out there. That, that's just tough, tough job for that corner. They're going to give him seven points. One-on-one, -on -one, Joe Walker against Darnell McDonald. McDonald 6-3. He's right there. Good coverage. Poor technique. Does not come and look for the ball. That's an easy throw. You can make anybody, you can get uh, 50 guys out of the stands and throw that one. The only thing I'm shocked at is the officials took that long to talk about it. But at any rate, they finally do say touchdown. See, in that situation, I think a defensive, you got to play some in and out coverage and give those guys some help. Martin Gramatica in for the point after. And he's got it. It's 14 to nothing. So Kansas State has fumbled a couple of times today, but when they get an opportunity down in that red zone, they don't fumble very often. And Bishop throws to his favorite receiver. Kansas State 14, Texas nothing. Well, they say Bill Snyder controls just about everything at this university concerned with football and maybe more things, but... Mac Brown right there says, I, I don't know if I have control of anything over here right now. Yeah. Came in, this team is not ready to play the style of defense that we would all like to do. He told me yesterday that in the second half against UCLA, we simplified it to three defenses. He said the kids responded, but we might be in for a tougher battle here today playing against this team. I think he's right. 14 to nothing. Kansas State. We've already seen Bishop today throw a scoring pass, and boy, he was just phenomenal. As Gary said earlier, maybe it was a coming out party in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl last year against Syracuse, but he was sensational both with his arm, with his feet on the ground. He was the MVP of that bowl game, and it was 35 to 18 when all the smoke had cleared. Boy, would they love to go back to the Fiesta Bowl this well. year. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, the ratings are going to be higher this year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and a lot of the Tostino Fiesta Bowl 
uh, scouts are here. Yeah, the poll reps are here. reps are here. I was talking to one of them. I was kind of kidding him, saying, you know, when uh, you called the travel agent and asked for tickets to make think you didn't go into Kansas, did you? <laughs> Here's a kick, and it's a deep one. Dramatic at this point, frankly, does not allow many kick returns. No, and, and see, I did a scouting job there. See, I knew I could talk right through that kickoff. Right. You didn't have to worry about the play. Touch point. Touch point. Little guy with a big leg. Had a 65-yard field goal last week. And he might get another long-range shot before this one's over. Well, another bowl coming. They're pretty certain of that, and they would love it to be. Going in again to the Fiesta Bowl is a top-ranked team and a chance for a national championship for the Bowl Championship Series this year that we'll have for you for those first four days of 99 right here on ABC. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson with you. 13-28 till halftime. Texas trailing by two touchdowns. Ricky Williams trying to cut back. He cut right back into the middle where Damian McIntosh was waiting for. Wow. They're fast. They're fast, but at the point of attack, I mean, Damian McIntosh made the play, but at the point of attack, out here at the bottom of your screen, Travis Oaks and the guys just won't let the ball come around the corner. They just stop it. You know, if you just stay in your lanes and stay patient, the ball's coming back to you. Right now, the bigger yet slower Texas offensive line cannot get Ricky Williams outside this Kansas State defense. Ricky Williams, five yards on five carries. Second down a dozen. Williams in motion now, sets up as a receiver. Applewhite, going to go deep on the left side. Should be pass interference, no? Yes, finally the flag flies in. Nice shot, Carter got tangled up back there with Kwame Cavill. Well, looked like he had a step on the deep out over there. The ball was pretty well thrown, and uh, he went down in a heap, pass Look, interference. Yeah, looks like they entangled their legs that time. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Left side of the screen there, you see the little entanglement, obviously. Nice work. Oh, that one, yeah, entanglement. Got one of those Franklin things right here, I just keep it. <laughs> So that's a first down, and Texas will take those first downs any way they can get them. They only had one before that. Right. They're, you know, their, their first three possessions, 10 plays, 30 yards, one fumble. This is the second first down of the game. I don't think you can use half of your offense. You have to use the whole package against this Kansas State defense. Four wide receivers. Let's see if they're just trying to spread out the defense to give it to Ricky Williams. We'll find out. First down from the 33. Jeff Kelly and Mark Simino there to meet him. How well coached is Kansas State? Texas tries to sneak on the four people, the four wideouts. Kansas State just keeps on two of their linebackers, Kelly and Simino, come out with the nickel passage and matches it perfectly. Disrupt, clean up, mop up. That's right. All three of those linebackers on the Butkus watch list. Only Michigan, Notre Dame, and Florida are the other schools that can make that claim with their entire linebacking core mentioned. Applewhite rolls and throws, and he threw a strike. Close to a first down to Kwame Cavill. Good throw, rolling to his left and throwing back against his body, and that, uh, that one delivered right on the mark, yeah. pick up a nine. Nice call by Greg Davis here. He does not feel confident in his pass protection, kind of moves Applewhite out. Here are the first work, let's it go. It's a completion. You, know, you mentioned Kwame Cavill coming on. He really is. He's just getting better and better every week. And he, he has become the go-to guy in this offense as a receiver instead of Randy Harris. He's the guy. He's a big target, 6'2", over 200 pounds. Third down and a yard. This is where your All-American tailback's got to get you a first down. Boy, he did. He barely got it. McIntosh, the first one there. Ricky Williams on the bottom of the pile has been unable to find any kind of room to run. They may have to measure this one, too. I'm not sure. I don't think he made that. Maybe not. The spot wasn't the greatest, I'll tell you that much. Penn State leading Pittsburgh. 
Long time battle. Washington right now in front of BYU. We'll see the Huskies against the Huskers next week. I think Washington's one of the surprise teams in college football this year also. Made a nice adjustment with their offense to put it in the left-hander's hands yes. and let him do a little more, and it's paying off so far. Oof, that one's close. That's it. That's got good it. enough. Yep. Ricky says, I like making first downs, but those third and inches <laughs> and gaining four inches is no fun. That's not even the nose of the football. That's no. some other smaller body part. A, yeah, something on the, on, end the end on the end there. Ricky Williams <laughs> moving into some unbelievable company in the all-time rushing list. Of course, he's got Tony Dorr set in his sights, but he's going to pass several of those guys before this day's over if the Kansas State defense will let him. Shotgun, first down. Texas from its own 43. They give it to Williams. Trying to step on one man. Finally got a little bit of room to work, and he did it all on his own. Jeff Kelly made the tackle. That stiff arms, one of Ricky's best moves. And even though they were holding on to his jersey for dear life, he made a positive gain out of it. Ricky Williams has made a career out of getting yardage after the initial hit. Right. I think he's going to have to rely on that today because uh, not a lot of clean runs against this defense that is just so much coming at every angle. What do you call those yaks? Yard yes, after yard contact. Yard after contact, yeah. yaks. We'll keep an eye on the yaks today. From midfield, second down and three. Applewhite lofts one out. Dangerous pass. Nunez tipped. Maybe would have been better off to give up on that one. Well, that's impossible to do. You're right from hindsight, but when you're going after it, you don't know what's going on. This was one of the ones that, you know, maybe a little smallish of a quarterback. Applewhite lays the ball up. Nunez tries all effort he could to get it, and Jerry Cooper came up with a nice... You know what? They're going to say oh, no man. interception. He caught that ball. I think he did, too. They just waved it off. And you're going to hear the reaction of... He Wildcat fans, here's another look. This was a this was an easy catch. Right here, this was an easy call. Well, there wasn't any doubt in my mind when here I saw it. Here's the, the first angle. Time. Here's the angle. Look at that. He had it. That ball never touched the ground. Well, Texas maybe got a break there. Jared Cooper, who thought he had an interception, has to step back into the defensive huddle. Third down, meanwhile. And a long three, seventh play of the Longhorn Drive. Just over 10 minutes left first half. 14 to nothing, Kansas State. The four wide out grouping again. Applewhite in the shotgun, here comes the blitz. Applewhite hit as he throws. That one was almost intercepted. Darren Howard came storming in there after Applewhite. And it's fourth down. Darren Howard was rated by the Sporting News Football as the fifth best defensive end in college football. Uh, I can see why. He's playing like it today. He really he? is. I mean, Octavius Bishop is really not, you know, Howard could be out here without pads on. No one's touched him. <laughs> Chris Stockton to kick and David Allen back. Allen's had a couple of nifty returns already today. The all time yardage punt return leader. Day in history, two scores already of plus 60 yards on the season. Let's see if he can get his hands on this one. Stockton again got great hang time on it. Allen from the eight. He made the first two miss, the third one miss. He might be on his way. Broke a tackle. David Allen for it. David Allen is gone. Watch him run. The third of the year touchdown. Can one guy be? Shifty enough right here for somebody. He even had time to adjust his face mask on this one. Falls right into line with other Kansas State great returners like Chris Canny, Andre Coleman, Mitch Running. That's unbelievable. And how about Burl Schweitzer, who we talked to oh, last night, Burl. a little uh, soiree we went to. He had 
three punt return touchdowns in his career, and I said, you got a record that's about to fall. Burl, he says, I wouldn't want it to go to anybody better than number 32. Allen for the touchdown has made up for his fumble, hasn't he? 93 yards, 21 to nothing, Kansas State. The second longest punt return in Kansas State history has given the Wildcats a 21 to nothing lead now. And that guy's name all alone in the record books as a punt returner. David Allen just went 93 yards and dramatic and out of kick. Hodges Mitchell and Ryan Nunez back. I know Bill Snyder's a good coach, but you can't coach that. You can only recruit that. Oh, I guess. This will probably not be returnable. That one's about 20 yards out of the end zone. Well, earlier, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question. Kansas State athletic teams, as you know, are nicknamed the Wildcats. And what's the name of the town that they play in? If you've never been out here, maybe you wouldn't know. It's, there you go, yeah. the Little Apple. <laughs> Manhattan, as Gary said, when the bowl people were making their plans to Manhattan, they might have thought of Broadway or New York, not Manhattan, Kansas. But uh, this town and this area, you talk about an area that gets fired up for a football Saturday. Wow. They were pumped up yesterday, weren't they? Were they ever. First down, Texas. Down three touchdowns. It's a spot they are getting all too familiar with. The toss to Ricky Williams. He might have gotten two yards, but Travis Oaks didn't let him go. Well, this defense is geared around letting Oates and Kelly and Seminole make yeah. the tackles. They don't disappoint anybody. No, they don't. They? You know, Jeff Second Kelly, nine, I, I wonder if he might be quicker than Ricky Williams. I mean, he, he lines up about five yards deep as middle linebacker. When Ricky goes one way, he goes that way, too. He is quick. Keep your eyes at number eight. He'll lead you a lot of action. Look at that total yardage. Only 47 yards for Texas. Make the catch, yes he did. Ooh. Wayne McGarity held on. Pass Pick up a 32 yards. I think the Kansas State defense and Mike Stoops is willing to give teams the opportunity to do this because they commit a lot of guys to the run. This is what Texas has to do. They have to say, I don't care if we're playing with a freshman in high school, we have to throw the ball downfield if we just we're gonna embarrass ourselves if we keep trying to throw the ball short. You have to spread this defense out not just horizontally but vertically as well. Major Applewhite's done a fine job at quarterback so far today. As you said earlier, he has not been the problem. He's 6 of 11 right now. He's back to throw his ball pass of the day. And he threw that one out of a rope to Derrick Lewis. First down, pick up of a dozen. No, this guy can play. Major Applewhite can play. Does not really matter how tall you are if you're a quarterback. You've got to be a playmaker, and this guy is a playmaker. Understands the game. See well enough, throws through the lanes, and gets it there. The seniors on Texas team, when well, they saw this young guy come in on his recruiting <laughs> trip, thought it was a frat party guy that uh, took a yeah. wrong turn. They said he can't be a football player. Yeah, quit hanging around here. Man. Yeah, he's still a football player. He's hanging in the pocket today at the 34. First down, Texas. Ricky Williams a little opening and closed in a hurry, but he got almost five. Lamar Chapman from the secondary. Along with Mark Simino made the tackle. Number one, Lamar 20 number yards three, for Ricky Williams, but it's come on 10 carries. Yeah, we, you know, you, you talk about yards. trying to stay with Ricky, trying to carry the ball at least 30 times. It's a little tough now. It's 21 nothing. Texas has to just say one drive at a time. Had a lot of practice that last week. That's for sure. throws, I'm not quite sure who that was intended for. Was it a crossing pass to Nunez or if it was a deep slant in on the outside? I really don't Gerald know. Gerald Deesman is going to get called for holding downfield this time, outside wide. It's going to be a penalty. There it is. There's the hold. Outside at the corner. A lot of grabbing being done outside by those corners. Top of the screen. Wide receiver out there on the numbers. Watch Try to get inside. No, no, no. We got the big hand on the jersey. I think the ball was thrown inside to Newman, but got the holding outside. 
He'll take the penalty in the first down. It's the second time they've gotten a first down by penalty. Well, they're, they're so aggressive. Kansas State is so aggressive offensively in their play calling and defensively in their play calling that, that you're just going to get some penalties. I mean, it's just going to happen. Iowa State fresh off their big one over Iowa, putting it on today as well. Another victory, it appears. Indiana surprising Kentucky. Deepest penetration of the day for the Longhorns. Just inside the Kansas State 20 yard line. First down. Applewhite. Look out! Oaks just nailed it. It's intercepted. Picked off by Devane Robinson. Ooh. Oh, that one hurts way up here. There is never a protection when an outside linebacker is not accounted for. This is either on the quarterback not reading his hot properly or on the tight end or the tackle not blocking it properly. No matter what, somebody made a mental mistake. There's a tor turnaround right there, a big turnover to a defensive tackle who That's drops in one of those zone blitz thing. Yep. yep. Wow. So Devane Robinson's a happy guy. And Oaks got a major hit on the Texas quarterback. Another turnover. Goes back to the Wildcats offense from the 20. Picks it. Blasts through the left side. Dusty Renfro, Woodard, Hampton, they're all over there to make the stop. Tackle by number 46. Well, just every time Texas gets something going, they turn around and give it back to Kansas State. Yeah, and they, they just don't have the the athletes to match up with this catch with this K State offense. Sooner or later, you keep giving them the ball like this, they're just going to keep popping big plays. Mm -hmm. Bishop has been quiet again. Let's, let's look for him to get involved by throwing the ball deep. He's downwind now, and he can throw it 93 yards. That's what they to. say. Dixon. Dixon's got a first down. Aaron Babineau made the tackle. But Eric Hickson out to about the 33-yard line. Your exclusive home for primetime NFL. Sunday night at 8 15 Eastern. It's ESPN. The Eagles and the Arizona Cardinals. Irving Fryer and company against Jake Plummer and the gang. And then on Monday night on ABC Sports, Monday Night Football, live at its new time, 8 Eastern. Emmett Smith and the Dallas Cowboys take on the New York Football Giants. Sunday night and Monday night here on ABC, Sunday night on ESPN. 6-15, remaining in the half, 21 to nothing. Fourth-ranked Kansas State looking all of that fourth-ranking. Bishop wanted to go long as Gary was talking about a moment ago and now takes off on his own. Got the corner in the first down. Took a pretty good size shot on the sideline from DeAndre Lewis. But you got a running quarterback that's a threat to go all the way. You got to hit the guy. 17 yard pickup. You got to have coordination on defense. One time this Texas defense has poor coverage, they get burned. The next time they finally cover someone and they lose containment on Michael Bishop. It's tough to play defense because 11 guys have to be working together or you're going to have a breakdown. You said they do something on the series long. You didn't know it would be a 17-yard run. That's right. <laughs> right at midfield. 6.01 left. There's his rushing total already today. Drops back and throws the slants. Tips by the linebacker, Dusty Renfro. I think got a hand on it, and it's incomplete. You know when the quarterback for the opposition has more yards rushing than Ricky Williams, things aren't going well. Yeah, and that, that'll get around, too, believe me. Ricky Williams made the statement going into this game that his teammates were going to have to help him if he was ever going to have a chance for the Heisman. He said, we have to win nearly all of the rest of our games, plus have a good game here against K-State. So far, looks ominous. This guy looks like the Heisman candidate, and he will be, I'm sure, considered, but you kind of wonder if well, the kind of numbers you would need. But I tell you what, you talk about leading the club and being an MVP type of guy, he sure fits the bill. This one's incomplete as well. They're looking for a flag and do not get one. Chris Butcher was there with Darnell McDonald. Interesting to watch this uh, Kansas State team at such high expectations this year. And well, Snyder was a little concerned that those expectations would turn into to distractions. Michael Bishop said, <laughs> distractions? This program was built on distractions. That's right. We can handle it. Five straight bowl games this club, or these Kansas State teams, I should say, have gone to. 41-game winning streak against non-ranked opponents at home, and that includes now Texas non-ranked today. Hey, hey, hey. 
Rams going to bring up punting situation. So three passes in a row that weren't the greatest. There is a flag down now, though, in the Kansas State backfield. And they're going to call intentional grounding, I think, on How Bishop. How can you throw, call intentional grounding on that? He threw a bad ball. There's a referee that didn't play much football in his career. If he did, he was a down lineman. <laughs> Cal, you can't throw them all perfect. They've had a lot of committee meetings today for some relatively easy calls, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. This is their third one or fourth one. Michael Bishop should also show him his ring finger that he hurt in, in la a couple weeks ago, and he has a little bit of a knuckle problem in some of those throws to get away from. That's a horrible call. Horrible call. Intentional grounding. It doesn't make much difference. They're going to punt either way. Yeah, it, it but you're does, right. But it's, it's just the principle of the thing. I hear you. It's a design dash play getting Michael Bishop out. Watch. He's going to try to throw the comeback to the outside. The ball just sails on him. Hasn't he ever seen a bad throw before? The ball was attended for Darnell McDonald. That's a horrible call. James Garcia hustles out for his second punt of the day. Hodges Mitchell waiting on it for Texas. See it. Nice kick to Mitchell from the five. Hodges Mitchell trying to get in the act like David Allen and has a pretty nice return out to the 16-yard line, a 12-yard return. Michael Bishop leading his case to no avail. His team goes up by 21. The Wildcats lead Texas with 534 left in the first half as Bill Schneider brings his offensive troops around him on the sideline. And Texas has been unable to get anything going offensively, including their All-American tailback, Ricky Williams, held in check so far. First down, the Longhorns, the bill in motion. Ricky Williams will be hit immediately in the backfield. Rowe is there, so Seminole. They are just so rangy. Everybody wearing purple on that defense. You know, Texas is losing by 21 points, but uh, they're the, they're the second-best team on the field right now. <laughs> this officiating crew. <laughs> they're struggling a little bit. They're in bit. last right now, they're so last. I say. They're in last out of the three teams. <laughs> now we'll hear about that, but. Well, everybody's got to take criticism. Five minutes left in the half. Check for us. All right, second down and 12. And he goes 17 yards for the score. Applewhite got pressure from Damian McIntosh, number 77. Just as he threw the ball, he got hit. Was not even really able to follow through and probably threw the ball not where he was attempting to throw it. It kind of came out of his hand. That's the second interception he's had because of the rush inside forcing a bad throw. They can beat you with defensive touchdowns, special team scores, and on offense. They've done it every way so far today. Grammatica's extra point is up and good. And it is starting to be shades of last week against UCLA for the Texas Longhorns. They are down 28 to nothing. Well, you have to admit, Kansas State is, is not just competing now against Texas. They're competing against UCLA. Whoever's in the top part of the polls. in the top yep. part of the polls. Especially UCLA, though. They can stand out there and say it was 35-3 to a week ago. And we got lazy. Whatever. And, and then UCLA got lazy. Texas showed their pride and came back and played hard. But right now, K-State is saying we can match that. Purdue apparently didn't have much trouble with Dante Culpepper today. Louisville pasting Illinois. And that's a final. You see some of the other scores from across the country. The wind's not slowing down, and neither is the Kansas State team. They have scored on a 93-yard punt return, an interception return for a score, and then the running of Hickson and the passing of Bishop. There's really not a lot of option for Mac Brown at quarterback either. Nope. You know, after... Major Applewhite, it's Adam Dunn, is listed number two. He's a true freshman, has never even had a snap. Probably didn't even have much practice time until this week. Defense number three, Hodges Mitchell. Number I don't three, think there'll be very much drama from Dramatica here. Probably kick this one out of the stadium again. 
And he does. He almost hit our guy with the parabolic mic down there in the base of the goal post. Well, we've got a quick break here. Let's check in with John Stoddard in our New York studios. John. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98, all the day's scores and highlights, three of the top five teams in action, including number one, Ohio State. And John, it's a very strong year for college quarterbacks this year, several with key tests today. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98. All right, guys, here it's 28 to nothing. Kansas State, just under five minutes left, second quarter. With Gary Danielson, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us here at Wagner Field, KSU Stadium. Manhattan, Kansas. First down, Texas from its own 20. Ricky Williams, there's nowhere to hide for number 34 today. Travis Oaks with the tackle. Well, one more look at the touchdown. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Applewhite, but uh, it's kind of our job. Here comes the rush inside. There you can see what happens with the pass rush and the coordination of smart linebackers threw it right between the top part of the circle on the eight and the bottom part of the circle on the eight. Did he never see him at all, you think? I, I, I think he was trying to throw it around him, trying to fit it around him, got hit just as he let it go and ended up going off target. throw on the run and it's Bobby Cavill and it looks like he's going to have a first down. Let's check in in New York with John Saunders again. Brad, apparently Missouri for the second straight year is not impressed by the number one team in the nation. This time Ohio State. Joe Germain scrambles out of the pocket, takes it towards the sideline, gets popped there, it comes loose and right into the hands of Carl Posey. He scoops it up, takes it the distance for the touchdown and Missouri has taken the lead on the Buckeyes. Ohio State though is threatening. Under four minutes in the half. Texas with a first down. They'd like to get something on the board before intermission. Applewhite, plenty of time this time. Throws incomplete. Receiver fell down that time. That was Jamel Thompson who lost his footing. Pass was intended for number 12. Jamel Thompson incomplete. Just as we talked about the coordination of the defensive for Texas, the coordination for the offense. Finally, the offensive line gets a stop, holds off the pass rush, and you have receivers stumble out wide. Everything seems to be a step behind, and that's what that attacking defense can do to you. You know, you got guys coming at you from every angle. You have to do something a little quicker than you want to, and problems happen. Second and 10 from the 31. Possible blitz from Kansas State. Kelly's thinking about it. He backs out of it. Applewhite's in trouble anyway. On the sideline, incomplete. Cavill, the intended receiver. The closer guy was Gerald Niesman. Brad, that was that zone blitz again that K-State ran. Devane Robinson lined up as a defensive tackle. As you see McIntosh limp off. Devane Robinson lined up as a defensive tackle, then bailed out as a middle linebacker. He got a pick by doing that earlier. We haven't said much on the positive side for Ricky Williams, have we, today? No. Nope. He's been shut down completely. And timeout taken by Kansas State. 3.45 left here in the first half. It's all fourth-ranked Kansas State right now, leading by 28. Kansas State 28 to nothing over Texas and the Longhorns with a third and 10 coming up here. Third down, 10, 31 to one. Four wide receivers for Major Applewhite. Brings the delayed blitz. Applewhite delivers it, but I don't think it's going to be enough for a first down at the 40-yard line. The pass complete three times last week against UCLA. Texas had completions on third down and came up a yard short of the first down marker. It just happened to him again. You know, and that is not really just the fault of the play design right there. What it is is third and long. I mean, you're, you're inviting a blitz in that situation. Defensive coordinators know that you have to throw hot. And what happens is if you come up and make a sure tackle, which Kansas State does, tackles very well, you're not going to pick up first downs. Hold your breath, folks. Yeah. David Allen's back in punt return formation. He's docked into kick. Oh, this one off the side of his hey, foot. That's I don't think one. Allen will have a chance at this one. That's a good one. And bounces out of bounds at the 31. You're probably right. 
Didn't give any chance for a return. Only a 29-yard kick, however. And now Kansas State's got plenty of time to work with. It's only a 29-yard kick, but it's 69, 61 yards better than the last one. <laughs> That's true. The last one was in the end zone. <laughs> 69 yards closer. 255 remaining in the half. And there's the offensive unit with Michael Bishop, number seven, in the middle, set to take the field. And they have one timeout remaining to work with, if need be. Now you're thinking Gramatica. Yes, you are. I mean, if you can get it to the 40-yard line, you have a shot at it. You get him to midfield, you got a shot at it. Yeah, you do. You got the wind at his back. And the give on a handoff to Hickson. He might get him in Gramatica range right here on this run. First down. Picked up about 12. Eric, talk about shifty. I think he fits that category, too. Quick feed in the hole, and he's had a nice first half as he's got over 100 yards. Well, he, there's Gramatica getting ready. He's got his nuclear shoes on right there. <laughs> You really can't get too close to that foot. It's, you know, you get just... Yep, it's like kryptonite, yeah, sort of. it's really, it's scary. <laughs> first down at the 43. Hickson over 100 yards on the ground in the first half. So we knew a tailback would have a big first half. We maybe thought it would be Ricky Williams, not Eric Hickson. Bishop throws complete. McDonald does a little dance around at the 45, and he's got a first down, a pickup of about 13. He almost stepped out at the 47-yard line, and then he cut back in and got extra yardage. This was an audible by Bishop. Jam coverage. Stay with the route. They call it a lock out. Instead of running the fade, the receiver stays with this pattern, even though it's bump and run coverage. Joe Walker, not very good at bump and run coverage. Well, this would be a chip shot for Gramatica if they made no more yardage here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, he's smiling. He says, Coach, this one's too short. Yeah, back up. Back up. Take a penalty. Do something. And now the officials are going to say timeout Kansas State. Well, we talked about Martin Gramatica and in dramatic fashion a week ago. This was the final play of the first half. 65-yard field goal. Good. And he had about four yards to spare as you get another look at it. Maybe more than four. And Gramatica pretty excited. Mobbed by his teammates. The longest field goal in NCAA history without a tee. He got mobbed so bad, somebody hit him with a helmet in the nose and cut a bridge of his nose open. But that football that he slept with that night, the coaches say, he doesn't get to keep it because the NCAA says that at the end of the year, Kansas State can make a trophy for him at the end of his career and give it to him that way, or Martin can send $40 to the Kansas Come State on. Athletic Department to keep the football. Are you? Can you believe that? Oh, well. <laughs> hey, those are rules, right? That's page 3,417 <laughs> of the NCAA rulebook. At any rate, uh, he was one happy kicker last week, and he is a threat. He was a Lou Groza Award winner last year. He only missed one field goal during the regular season. He had a bad Fiesta Bowl. He missed two there and promised to make up for it. Canceled his summer vacation to Mexico to work out on his leg, and it has paid off so far this season. Well, Bill Snyder kind of was, there we go. It's about how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me, partner. <laughs> we got a long way to go. At the 44, first down. 218 left, quite a bit left in this half. They fake the toss and come back to the slant to McDonald. He wheels on the defensive back and heads to the sideline out of bounds, the 24-yard line. This McDonald kid's not too bad either. Well, he's come out. It, it, his coming out party was the Fiesta Bowl. You can see the confidence. Last two games, outscored in the first half, 63 to three. And you know the number 66 is kind of a scary number. Yes, it is. 63 points is a scary number too because uh, the last two games, Kansas State has won both of them by a margin of 66 points. It's a magic number that Texas would just as soon put in a closet somewhere and never have to hear again. Hickson on the counter. Whoa. Nice hit he put on Clinton Jammer and a penalty marker. Thanks, Mattis. Five more years to tackle on there. Quinn Jammer says, if i got to make this many tackles, I should be allowed to tackle anything I can get my hands on. That's right. Not a good sign when your free safety probably is leading the team in tackles here and going in the first half. These folks have been waiting since the beginning of the season to watch their team play a respectable opponent and feel they've been slighted a little bit in the 
Sagarin ratings, they're ranked 20th, the national polls. Leapfrogged by one of the polls by UCLA this past week, and now they're trying to put 35 on the board against Texas in the first half, which would be a field goal better as far as margin than UCLA did last week when it was 35-3 to at halftime. So. And, then, and now Texas is going to, some self-doubt is going to start to creep in this Texas team because last week they came back against UCLA and everybody said, all right, Texas really found themselves in the second half. But it may be that UCLA just said, hey, this game's over. They lost their focus and, and took it easy on this Texas defense. So that's the way the game goes. First and goal after the Hickson run. He'll get the call again, straight up the middle. And Eric got it down oh, inside the three. There's ESPN USA Today coaches poll. Ohio State number one, Florida playing Tennessee tonight. Nebraska, who we'll see next week, Kansas State. And UCLA number five. Well, you know, after today, you know, if Missouri, for you know the Big 12 people are watching that one very closely, can hold on. And Florida's got a tough one against Tennessee. Yeah. That old Nebraska again could end up being number one. Could be another shake-up day, that's for sure. And now everybody jumped as Bishop takes it into the corner of the end zone. It's a matter of who down there in the, the pit jumped first. Was it somebody in purple or somebody in white? Sean Rogers is the guy that kind of reacted and hit it into Randall Cummings that time, the center for Kansas State. Probably have a conference on this here. <laughs> Dead ball, prior to the snap. We have defense offside by contact, half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. You are correct, sir. That's exactly what happened. They got one. Don't forget. Valvoline halftime, 98. John and Todd are waiting in about a minute and a half to bring you all the scores and highlights from the other games across the country. Second and goal just outside the one. Eric Hickson, not quite. It'll be third and goal from about a foot away. Anthony Hicks made the tackle on Hickson. Let's see where they spot it. Uh, just inside the one. I get the feeling that both teams would like to score on the last play of the half. Just to get to the locker room. Right. I don't know if, I don't know if Texas wants the ball back goal. that bad either. Goolsby will be the fullback. Eric Hickson already has one touchdown today, a long range one of 44 yards. He's done some of the damage to get him down close on third and goal. Texas almost jumped. Bishop keeps it and scores. Touchdown, Bishop. From a yard out. One yard on the play for Michael Bishop. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Milford Stevenson this time. The left tackle comes down real hard on Sean Rogers. K-State had been running right up in the middle, and this time the left tackle just slammed down, and Bishop with those quick feet ran the sneak wide. Worked perfectly. Gramatica in for the point after to try to make it 35 to nothing, and he does. You know, he kicks him so hard on those extra points, you've got to have plexiglass up there. That's now. right. <laughs> That's why they put that new building down there in the end zone. He puts them right up there in the windows. <laughs> Get those tinted windows from uh, the hockey arenas here. So Mac Brown for the second week in a row sees a high-powered opponent have his team buried at intermission. Now the question, as Gary said, will be, will they show the kind of character and the non-quit attitude that they had last week against UCLA, or will Kansas State just keep right on rolling? Well, you know, what's funny, and this has always been one of my pet peeves as a player, is I, I, sometimes you tell the coach, he goes, I don't want you to quit, I want you to compete, keep playing hard, and you go to the coach, Coach, I'm already playing hard. I'm playing as hard are, as I can. They're, they're better than we are, yep. you know. They're faster, they're bigger, and I can try as hard as I want. The guy's going to run right by me. You do some of the reading, and you hear that some of the coaches say that tackling is 90% determination and 10% technique. And I say, Coach, I'm real determined. I just ain't getting close <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm real determined I'm not getting close enough to use my technique, Coach. Dramatic good a kick. And those two guys back at the goal line might as well take a knee now, probably. Yeah. The guys in the, in the, on the hill have a better chance of getting this one. Here it goes. With the kryptonite shoe. It's out of the back of the end zone. It's a one-hopper into the crowd this time. His fifth 
kickoff, fourth touchback. touchback uh, last week in the first, first half minute against minute. UCLA, Texas with just three points. They were encouraged by the fact that they actually won the second half, if you want to put it that way. But you can see there was a dramatic difference in how they played the final two quarters last week against the Bruins. But that's yet to be determined if they can get done against a Kansas State defense that I think, quite frankly, is quite a bit better yeah. than UCLA's yeah, is. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. This is the best, one of the top defenses, and I don't think they're quite as good. Kansas State is not as good as UCLA's receivers. Right. I think they match up pretty close at quarterback, and I think this Kansas State offensive line is probably an even, but defensively, it's a better defense. Kansas going to play a little bit safe. Ricky Williams, there's just nowhere to run for him today. Kelly made first contact. Jeff Kelly all over the place. Darren Howard helped him out, a pickup of a yard, and Ricky Williams has 13 carries for 19 yards. And on the day of those rushes, six times he's been held to no gain or negative yardage to pick up those statistics. Well, you know, I said he had to carry the ball 30 times. And if you give the tailback the ball 30 times today, Ricky's going to be in trouble. Ricky might have, hurt. He might have 80 <laughs> yards on 30 carries before the day's over. You can't keep running the tailback when you're behind 35 to nothing. Final play of the half. Williams got about two or three to bring the half to a close. Dominant Kansas State Wildcat squad right now. Texas in a huge hole again that they have become all too accustomed with. Michael Bishop and his troops out in front 35 to nothing. Passing yardage, but uh, that really didn't matter at this point. 17 to 7 in first downs. And the starting field position, it's always been a problem when you play Kansas State because of their kicker. Coming in, the average starting position for opponents was a 21-yard line, and Texas is right about on that today. Third down and four. Applewhite waits till the last moment, trying to go to McGarity, incomplete. In and out of his hands as Dyshad Carter was there to help bump it him in the back to make sure he didn't hold on. Oh, man. You know, that, big back, that brings back bad memories. Right? <laughs> Forgot about that. At the point of impact, this Kansas State team hits you about as hard as we've seen, I think. Yeah, you figure that out. I mean, that, that's just superior athletes because you have to be in position to make those type of tackles, and they are in position with their knees bent, and they hit you. Here's the punt. That means David Allen's on the other end. Fair catch he has to call here. That's a rarity, and he takes it at the 43-yard line. So Kansas State with a penalty marker down. Did they not give Allen enough room there, even making the fair catch? Yet another. That's going to be the call, apparently. Kick catch, interference. On the kicking team, five yards from the end of the kick, first down. So they'll be near midfield when they start this offensive set. Go behind the scenes of a nightly sports show where the real-life stories happen. Don't miss the premiere of Sports Nights. It's coming up Tuesday at 9, 38, 30 Central Time, right after the season premiere of Spin City, Tuesday night on ABC. Well, great starting field position again now for the Kansas State offense, working from its own 48-yard line. Bishop looks right, comes back to the left, and McDonald has got a career day going inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. 13 more yards. He's over 100 on eight catches now for Darnell McDonald. People continue to wonder, can Michael Bishop complete enough passes that this team can run the table? I mean, that, you know, Kansas State, I don't think they're really going to be satisfied with this season unless they go into that Nebraska game undefeated. with a chance undefeated yep. and, and, and go all the way because that's the type of football team this is. First down at the 39 of the Longhorns. Dusty Renfro thinking about a blitz, backs out of it. On a counter, it's Hickson, who's had a big game, too. He had more than 100 yards in the first half. Good open field tackle by Quentin Jammer. And Hickson holding his right leg. I don't know if he got hit right on that by Jammer. Let's hope this is a cramp. Yeah. Counter action this time. Jeremy Martin, number 78, is going to lead the way. He makes the nice fit this time on D.D. Lewis. D.D. and D.D. can't get in there, and there's a hit again by your free safety. Jammer hit him right on the side of the knee with his helmet. 
There's the numbers for Eric, who came in with 1,770 yards and needed 476 for the all-time rushing record at Kansas State, and he's well on his way with over 120 so far today, and we'll hope that he can come back in. Besides uh, uh, Eric being a good runner, he does everything else well. The coaches tell you he blocks well, he knows what to do, runs good routes, catches the ball. That's why he's valuable. David Allen on a little delay. He fumbled earlier the ball game, broke a couple tackles here, and spins down near the 30-yard line. And he got about six yards. It's going to bring up third down and a yard. Allen, of course, with an electrifying punt return in the first half of 93 yards, the second longest in Wildcats history. And third down and short yardage. There have not been a lot of third down situations for Kansas State. Quite frankly, they're getting too much yardage on first and second. They're five of seven, though, today. And now, if Bishop gets that, it'll be six of eight. Michael, third down. It's Jermaine Anderson and Casey Hampton along with Woodard in on the stop. Well, Mac used his ace speech last week against UCLA at <laughs> halftime, Brad. What does he tell him this I week? I don't know. Same thing on two? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I used to say in a huddle, oh. okay, guys? I used to have Billy Sims in my backfield. We used to run that toss sweep so much that I used to go, same thing on two, and everyone knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Billy. Yep. Here's a fourth down conversion. Last year, Kansas State was 12 of 17, 71% of their fourth down conversions. They're three of four this year. This is their first attempt at such today. Fourth down, less than a yard. Bishop looks like he's got it. D.D. Lewis down on the bottom of the pile along with J.J. Kelly, but uh, they're going to move the sticks here, I think. Michael Bishop, the more you watch him, the more you understand what being in the system for more than one year means to this guy. He, he came into the team, obviously, last year as a junior college transfer. Last spring was only the first time he ever went through spring right. practice, so really he now has one season, a bowl game, and a spring practice under his belt. You can see it. He's much more comfortable. He's not just running around and making plays. He's running within the offense. Ron Hudson, their offensive coordinator, was saying the 17 practices between the end of the season and the bowl game last year and then the 15 in the spring, and it was just marvelous how he came along. There's a nice play fake. He rolls and wants to run, or rather throw, and he does to swift the tight end. Good thing he completed that early with an intentional route. <laughs> it's the same play as before. Now this one he delivers to his big tight end first catch by Swift today. Right now, the how senior. about these people here? These tickets right here on this hill, those pay as much as the people in the stands. Now these are a little less, I think, right here. <laughs> you don't get a chair here. That's a bargain over there. That's a bargain. You give you you get a, a bottle of suntan lotion for those over there. Cool thing about there though is uh, yeah, there you can see that. Yeah, those seats are seats. In the end zone. See, those are thirty-five dollars, and you can jockey anywhere you want. Jam place. Forty-two thousand plus on hand for this one. Second down and six. Seventh play in the Kansas State drive. Bishop, quick drop, zips it out, complete. McDonald again, fighting for yardage, and he's got it first and goal. Tony Holmes holding on for dear life, but McDonald, 6'3", 200-pounder, just dragging would-be tacklers with him. 18 more yards. McDonald on a day that, uh, much like his bowl game performance of a year ago, the way things are going. So many receivers and, and offenses are built around the bump and run coverage that they just run the fade out to the wide side. Well, here you see that the receiver stops on that coverage, does not just adjust his route to the fade, runs out there and stops and just runs his route inside the bump coverage. First and goal, just inside the seven, two tight end set for the Wildcats. Texas almost jumped, they may have. Bishop on the option, heads toward the end zone. Jermaine Anderson looked like the guy, the defensive end who may have jumped in that neutral zone before the snap. A true freshman, one of many that are playing for Texas. And uh, they brought 13 freshmen, I believe, on the trip. And a lot of those guys are seeing action. Dead ball, prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. They're going to call it on the offense, and that's why Anderson jumped in, apparently. So this will back up a line of scrimmage outside the 10. Anything you can cheer about, Max, saying, come on, guys, stay with it. First and goal back at the 11-yard line now. 
you know, that's one thing Max said. He says, I don't, we don't have time to teach effort around here. You guys either play hard, we'll find somebody else. If you can't try hard, we'll find, we can teach you everything else, but effort's your job. There'll be more and more freshmen playing if that doesn't continue, right? McDonald, the lone wide out to the near side. And David Allen, the tailback. And now everybody had it except the center that time, I think. And Cummins that time said, I thought you said three. Yeah. You said two? Yeah. He said, I heard Gary say yeah. next same thing on two, but I, I didn't know you said two. <laughs> Good ball. Part of the That's my bad right there. On the offense. Five yards. Well, this one's going the wrong way, and now they change up personnel. They bring in a wide receiver and bring Hickson back in. So his knee's all right. Only two offensive linemen had to re be replaced off this fine offensive line from a year ago. Todd Werner, who went to the Seattle Seahawks, and Kendall Jaycox, the center from a year ago. Randall Cummings is the guy who's taking his spot. He's a little small of size. They list him at 285, but he's probably only 265. Play action, and now Bishop on his own. And he pays the price. You know, normally I'd say that's outside of the design of the offense, but that was a called play. That was that play action quarterback draw again. Down to the 15-yard line. You make a mistake, you come over and you get to talk to Coach Snyder. That's paying the price there, too. That's yeah. uh, Shad Let's Meyer, see. the Shad. backup tight end. You want to play here, son? <laughs> <laughs> I know I recruited you. Sat there and ate those lousy hamburgers with your mom and dad. <laughs> you stay outside. Over in Pittsburgh, Kansas. But That's right. <laughs> he almost became a gorilla of Pittsburgh State right there. Play action by Bishop on second and goal. Way back at the 15, throws a strike. Down to about the one-yard line of McDonald again. Now they got it right back down close. It's the same thing that happened before. So many people break off their routes and run fades. This time, no matter what the coverage is, there it is. Got bumped run to the outside, adjusted, do a little arm over, and Michael Bishop says, I'm not laying this one up. I'm putting out their nice job. Irvis Hill was on coverage that time. In there for Tony Holmes, the true freshman says, well, I was as close as Tony, Coach. I mean, I was, you know, I didn't stop him, but I was just as close. Ten catches for 136 yards for McDonald, and that one got him down to the one-yard line. His feet were actually in the end zone. The ball touched down at the one. Third down and goal, remember, because they were backed up twice by penalty. On the option, keeper, Bishop. Not quite. So now do you go for it here up 35 to nothing or let your kicker have three? <laughs> either way, it's rubbing it in, isn't it? Well, and that's what I mean. It looks kind of bad either way, but there's not much you can do as a coach. I think, coach. You, I think you do too. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Mac Brown would understand that. You're down at the one-foot line. You've got a high-powered offense. You've got a quarterback with great feet. Monty Beisel, number 44, is in at fullback. He, he's a regularly a backup defensive end, plays in the nickel position. He's right here, number 44. Brian Goolsby's the tailback right now, normally yeah. the fullback, and he gets the call, and he stops. Didn't get it. Nice play. I think Tony Holmes made the first contact. So a goal on stand, maybe something that uh, Texas can hang its hat on here early in this third quarter or midway through the third quarter. Tony Holmes has been picked on today a little bit. Yes, yeah, D.D. Lewis and Tony Holmes kind of combined on this time. Beisel got it. Tony Holmes had the initial hit. D.D. Lewis came back and cleaned it up. And also Dusty Renfro was at the bottom. Of the Good news is they prevented a touchdown. The bad news is their offense has to come. Uh -huh. Got the one. <laughs> a little less than the one, as you can see. So a long way to go for the Longhorns offense if they're to finally get points on the scoreboard in this one. Ricky Williams is going to empty the Texas backfield. Ricky Brown, though, is flanked. Out as a wing back on the right side. A full wide running around, trying to find a receiver, and does. Out to about the eight yard line, out to Kwame Cavill again. We'll come back and Quivill catches his fifth ball of the day. It's about the most successful play that Texas has had repeatedly throughout the day is bringing Applewhite outside the pocket, not getting big yardage on those plays, but at least avoiding that penetrating pass rush from the K-State front four and linebackers. This young quarterback has hung in there today. He's taking some wicked looks. Second down the 
Ricky Williams. This time he drags people with him for a first down. Chuck Kelly. It's like he knows what play is coming each time. He's running so fast towards the line of scrimmage. He just hit it thousand miles an hour, and, and Ricky's going. To, I'm dodging a train every time I get the ball here before I get started. A lot of people might be saying, "Well, yeah, but number eight's just staring at number 34 and doing and going where he well, goes." But that's not the case. Remember, he had that's right. an he had, interception in coverage. He did, and, and you know, Mike Stoops doesn't throw around compliments. In fact, he does it about like he throws around manhole covers. But he said, "I'll take Jeff Kelly over any middle linebacker in the country." And he was including Jackson Moore in cover. Applewhite going deep. McGarity. That's the second time Pass he's complete to number eight, going Wayne to the McGarity. turf and diving out there and making the catch. He did one earlier, and that one goes all the way down to the 45-yard line. Well, Applewhite showed you something here. This ball was thrown about 40 to 45 yards into a very brisk win. Stepped up through it. Dyshawn Carter's on the coverage. Right on the money. Perfect throw. And that, that's a nice layout catch. Yes, it is. McGarity has struggled so much to stay healthy in his career. X running back who made the switch to wide receiver a couple years ago. Jamel Thompson takes his spot right now on the field while he gets a breather. Applewhite from behind got some pressure. Incomplete. Intended it for Derek Lewis, his tight end. Darren Howard again coming around the corner was just breathing right down Applewhite's neck again. Sure was. You know, we, we talk so much about the linebackers. We talk so much about that front four. Darren Howard and Damian McIntosh and Andre Rowe kind of putting pressure on. But Jared Cooper and Lamar Chapman, the two safeties, do a nice job. Sometimes it's different guys play the free safety depending on formation. And they seem to be in the right spot all day. And they clean up those hits and make sure tackles. Second down at 10. Here's Cooper right here in the bump and run position in the three wide receiver spots. Ricky Williams split out as a wide receiver. And Ricky Brown, the fullback, will get the kill. Guess who on the tackle? Oh, that's Ricky Williams on the carry. I beg your pardon. It was Ricky Brown that was flanked out as a receiver. And Kelly, as you said, they help each other up. Yeah, there. Ricky says, I'm going to help you up, my man. you got to be getting sick and tired That's of right. hitting me. I'll help you up. Watch, it, watch him just dodge the people and get in there right as the ball is snapped. Having trouble clearing here. Beats the tackle on the down block and gets in there. See, not only does he have to avoid the blocking scheme from Octavius Bishop, number 75, but he meets the running back right in the hole. Nunez, Cavill, and Thompson wide to the left side and McGarity to the right. Shotgun formation here on third down at nine. Rapport. Goes left and that one had nothing on it. That's because he had Darren Howard on him. <laughs> number 49 draped on number 11 again. Hard to have a lot on the throw. Here at Cooper. Fourth down eight, 44 yard line. It's tough, tough to be a running back when your offensive line is getting manhandled like this. Can't get started. Just shows you how how important it is to have a balanced attack when you're running offense in the 90s against these eight and nine man fronts. Chris docked into punt. A lot of shifting on the defensive front for Kansas State. And a high lazy kick to Allen. Let's go. Up's going to take a Texas bounce. They're going to be able to down this down inside the 10 yard line. Good coverage by D.D. Lewis. A frustrated All American running back. His team in a big hole, 35 to nothing. 5.32 left in the third quarter. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you. Kansas State all over Texas, 35 to nothing. And on. Their way, it appears, to their 11th straight win. Michael Bishop, a touchdown throwing, one on the ground today as well. And Hickson over 100 and a 44-yard touchdown scamper. And McDonald's had a career day as far as number of catches, 10. That far out does what he did at the Tostito Fiesta Bowl <laughs> last year when he caught seven for over 200 yards. But he's on one of those kind of days. He might end up with 200 yards receiving before it's over. In the backfield between Bishop and Allen, and Allen goes down for a loss of about three as we head in to John Saunders in our New York studios. John, well, Brad, the Ohio State Buckeyes is trying to fight back behind Joe Germain. This time, he just a little toss to Joe Montgomery, fights his way seven yards for the touchdown. Two point conversion is good. The Buckeyes back on top by a touchdown, Brad. Now, yesterday we were talking with Ron Hudson, a former assistant at yes. Ohio State, and I said, I think they're going to have trouble with Missouri. And you two said, no. 
well, I got my seven, he's got a, <laughs> a lot of runs. <laughs> 35 to nothing here. Second down and 12. Allen, about an opening, does out to about the 13 yard line. Marcus Wilkins, a true freshman, made the tackle. Uh, I got a feeling that just like a week ago, Kansas State has lost their edge in this football game right now. They keep looking up at that scoreboard. It's 35 to nothing. They just don't believe Texas is going to score any points on their defense. And Bill Snyder has his hands full trying to keep the attention of his team right now. Attention's a good point, yeah. Hard to believe that Kansas State would have trouble keeping attention wow. to play Texas, isn't it? It took them from 1968 to 1988 to win as many games as Bill Snyder did. In his 10 seasons I as they put it together. I remember 1989, Sports Illustrated called Kansas State the worst program in college football. Yep, in the history of maybe. Yeah, it could have they been. always buried him down there in the in the 105 to 112 grouping. You know, this guy has got people from all over the state coming to watch these games. Right. He's got coaches from all over the country coming around and trying to pick his brain on how he built this program. And I think he's gotten more guys fired, more coaches fired than a convention of athletic directors. Because everybody says if Bill Snyder can do it at Kansas State, you can do, you it, can wherever. do it wherever you are. Yeah. James Garcia, he doesn't get many opportunities. Set the punt. And Hodges Mitchell waiting on the other end near the 40-yard line. Garcia, ooh, and he hit this one a mile. Mitchell, oh, and he, uh, this might go goal line to goal line. Mitchell's in his own end zone right now and comes out with it. <laughs> Swarmed under at the seven. Well, he says, you know, our place kicker's got a big leg. When I've got the wind behind me, mine isn't bad either. A 78-yard punt by James Garcia. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Fidelity Investments, where 12 million investors put their trust. BF Goodrich Tires, take control. And by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Kansas State doing about anything they want with Texas so far. Deep into the third quarter, they're in front 35 to nothing. Second straight start for the Longhorn offense inside its own 10-yard line. Not a comfortable position for Major Applewhite again, making his first start in for the injured Richard Walton. The exception to those two interceptions, he's not played too badly, actually. Here's a little quick opening draw to Ricky Williams. And Ricky maybe got two or three yards on the carry as we check in with John Saunders in New York. Grab time for the Burger King play of the day from the Washington BYU game. Ray Butler, 98 yards. This is at the start of the second half. Really puts BYU in the hole. It takes it in for the touchdown. Also had an interception return for a touchdown. That's why Washington leads it 20 to 10. Brad. All right, John, we're going to see Washington next week against Nebraska. Second down and seven. Applewhite. Throws short. Nice job. Getting the pass away after he got some pressure and got it to Kwame Cavill, who picked up a first down. Apple White was trying to go to his tight end, Derek Lewis. You don't think this defense does a good job. Watch Derek Lewis come out. He's right here. They're going to have two guys on him. Look at that. <laughs> He looked like a purple sandwich Oaks there, didn't Simino he? Said, uh, we know this one right here. First down, 16-yard pickup, though, as he got it to Cavill after the 26-yard line. Applewhite wants to go deep and does. And let's see who that's came down with that's it. That's going to be a simultaneous catch. Nice Again, job. And he's still got a hold of it, and it is going to be a catch. He's had three long receptions today. That one's good for 40. He had a 42-yarder earlier. So Wayne McGarity and Kwame Cavill hanging in there, the two wide receivers. Can't ask for better coverage than this. Carter's right on him. Ball's thrown. I thought Carter was in a better position to get it, but so McGarity goes up and says, ah, ah, I'm getting this. I want my stats. <laughs> <laughs> McGarity, the senior out of San Antonio, went up and got it. Catches a 32, 42, and 40. That helps the old uh, average. Certainly does. He'll get a breather again. Jamel Thompson takes his spot in the lineup at the 34-yard line. 
First and ten. We'll see if number 34 gets the handle again, and if so, if he can find any room to run. Nope, they'll throw. Apple like it. Oh, that one intended for Jamal oh, Thompson. Joe Bob Clemens. Joe Bob Clemens. Brought the woodshed. Oh, my. He jumped over that time. Ricky Brown, I believe, was the blocking back in front of him. Major's trying yeah, to see if all the discs it, still work oh in his neck. Oh, my goodness. Ouch. Clements hit him right in the face. Yeah, he didn't really get him on the face mask, but he did get him in the face. No wonder Major is making sure that that yeah. head can still be on a swivel of a That's little bit That's why you do those neck exercises, oh. because you needed it right there. Ouch. He was a 17 shirt collar when he came into the game. It'll be a 19 tomorrow. And there's Walton, the guy whose spot he's taken today. Richard out with broken bone in a strong hand. 143 left third quarter. First and five at the 29. Applewide's going to loft one out for Jamel Thompson. And too far, out of bounds. You know, I've been noticing this crew over here. I think the best disciplinarian is the teacher that keeps these guys right here. I mean, they haven't moved the whole game because, I mean, look at they're looking at all this room over here. Let's see some kind of kid group, right? That's Bill Snyder's family. That's why he told him to stay there. <laughs> Got a better angle to the field, huh? Second and five, cheering on the defense. Ricky Williams ran into his own blocker and got about three more. Boy, everyone has just been tough sledding oh, today yeah. for Ricky. Travis Oaks came up and turned that in. Travis Oaks, of course, the brother of Dirk Oaks, who played here for four years. Eight years in a row, there's been an Oaks brother playing here, and this is the end of a, an era because Travis is a senior year now. And uh, nice, if there's any other brothers with OCHS, recruit him, Bill. <laughs> Bill's probably wishing they would have planted a few more oaks a long time yeah, ago right. so we have some more <laughs> linebackers. Third down. And about two coming up. Uh, we'll not wait for the tapes of this. We'll just go on. Of course, the Stoops brothers were as defensive coordinator Bobby and Mike and uh, here now. And, uh, Mark's at Wyoming. Mark's at Wyoming. And, uh, Wyoming gave Georgia all they wanted today. The Bulldogs survived 16-7. Two. We sort of think it's two down territory for Texas, now 35 to nothing, but we'll wait and see. Apple White I'm trying to draw him offside. Now he does get the snap. And Ricky Williams has a first down. Damian McIntosh, who was shaken up earlier, big number 77 in there on the tackle. McIntosh, they talk about him in glowing terms. He played last week, actually as an offensive and a defensive lineman in the game. He did. Watch Travis Oaks, Brad. Watch him come down and take on his blocker. Not only does he just make tackles, he does what he's supposed to do. Reverse shoulder, that's called. When you come up field, you turn your outside shoulder in and just make a pile. First down run to the 23. Ricky Williams motions out of the long horn back here. Straight down the middle for Derrick Lewis, and Oaks may have gotten a hand on that. Man, Back in coverage, man. the linebacker. The MVP of last year's Fiesta Bowl, Travis Oaks, is now in pass coverage. Had an interception and a fumble recovery in that Fiesta Bowl. This time he knows the pass, comes over there and gets on. What a, what a wonderful football player. We had him as a young guy in the Holiday Bowl, and the coaches were saying, wait till you see this guy when he's going to be a senior, and they were right. Yep. He was hurt most of last year with a shoulder problem. He hurt against Texas A&M and really never was 100% until that bowl game. He sat out in the spring after having surgery to fix that shoulder. It doesn't look like it's bothering him today. Eighth play in the Texans drive. Still struggling to find some points. Quick opener on a spread formation for Ricky Williams. Jeff Kelly tripped him up. Pick up of about five, a stumble of five, maybe. Yeah, there was a lot of space that time for the first time I've seen in a while, and uh, Jeff Kelly had to make a tackle with some space around him. That's always much tougher. Looks like that's going to do the third quarter in, and still no points on the board for the Texas Longhorns. That ends 
Three quarters of play in Manhattan, Kansas. And it is still Kansas State 35 to nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson back to start the fourth quarter here at Kansas State Stadium in Manhattan. And the conclusion of today's game will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. In recognition of those athletes, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. Major Applewhite through three quarters of play in his first collegiate start has hung in there on the drive that started way back at the seven yard line for Texas. He has the Longhorns third and five. Toss. Williams trying to get to the corner. Put a stiff arm oh, out. Nice. He dives out for what might be a first down. He scored three of his touchdowns this year with that very same move. And I don't know whether or not he got the first down. They might have to take a look at it. Just like he's hit the, the pylon that time. That is his patented move. Just dive it out there and stretch the ball out leading the country in scoring going into this game with nine touchdowns and he went for this first down like it was tough. he runs out here and goes what space i don't believe this <laughs> wasn't there for long though that's was it? exactly right just closed in on it and then the dive wow and they will bring the chains all the way from the other side of the now, field of course he was going for the marker that really wasn't the official one ricky goes oh my god i, yeah, mean, I did all that the wrong dive side. And it wasn't even the right side <laughs> i but still he think it. he got it yep, yep. Ricky Williams studies so many running backs. He loves the Barry Sanders of the world. He's watched a lot of tape of Earl Campbell, who everybody has compared him to because they both played at Texas, and a lot of other running backs. But you talk about of his nine touchdowns this year, you watch out the Ricky Williams Superman dive. Boom, there's one. Here comes one going left. Whoop, boom. Yep, reached it out just, just like that first Put a down. cape on him. He had one against UCLA last week. Doop. So that's his move. That's his patented move. But you know what he said? He said, I've always heard so much about Jim Brown. Can somebody get me more tape to watch on Jim Brown? I mean, this is a kid that just wants to get better week I'll in, tell you week out. somebody who can, Barry Sanders' dad, who says Jim Brown's better than Barry. That's right. It's pretty bad when your own dad's not your quarter. That's not fair. I think Barry's a very close second. Applewhite on first down. Throws it to the quarter. Touchdown. Finally off. The scoreless side of the scoreboard is McGarity, who had three big catches earlier now from 13 yards out of touchdown pass. Major Applewhite's first in his college career. Major Applewhite has had two interceptions, but he has not been the determining factor in this football game. I think he's accounted himself very well. Yes, he has. Mac Brown again is saying, just want you guys to play hard at this point. Throws the fade, and again, throws it very well. Puts it in the spot where Butler can't get it. McGarity, kind of a coming out game for him today. Looks very good. So three long catches and then the 13-yarder for the touchdown and the extra point good. 35-7. to seven. Texas finally on the board here early in the fourth quarter. Game 35-7. to seven. Kansas State. Chris Stockton's got it teed up for the long run. Major Applewhite's touchdown toss to Wayne McGarity, and he knocks this one out of the end zone. He, too, with his wind at the back, uh, bounces into the crowd. Kansas State will have to start from the 20. One of three Division I schools that have a head coach, a player, and a member of the football staff from the same family in our Home Depot coaches' fact. The Snyder family, Oklahoma State with Coach Simmons, and also Houston. It's a family affair. Of course, there was talk, and there's uh, Coach Snyder's son, who actually had a pretty good game last week in a running back spot, had over 30 yards on the ground. Ross, 13 for 39 last week. Marlon Charles, speaking of tailbacks in there, the third tailback, he gets it on a little counter and spins out for about a yard. That's it, Aaron Humphrey in on the tackle. He was tackled by number 49, Aaron Humphrey. And Coach Schneider's other son right there behind Cleveland. John, the assistant AD in charge of football operations. Brother to brother. That's right. You know what this is? I wonder what dad and mom are having for dinner. Yeah, you think we could go over there and take some of it yeah. from them? 
you know, he, listen, can I have the Mountain Dew? You can have the diet. I, I don't really like the diet. But. You're the only guy that looked in the media guy at Kansas State and saw the Snyder picture and says, this probably only took 10 minutes. It's the only time Bill would get away from football long enough exactly. to take the picture. Here's a little shovel pass. Ball loose and picked up by Texas. Now they hit the ground and it's in and pass. If, and that's what they're going to say. They'll say it hit the ground. Because that is a forward pass and nothing but an incompletion. I now, thought maybe he scooped it up before it hit the ground. Yeah, another, another one of those true freshmen, Jermaine Anderson, stayed there and made the play. Boy, I'll tell you, he made the play. There's another bad one. See, that, that, that was an interception. That was cradled. I think so, too. Absolutely. That was an interception. Let's see if they have a little bit of a conference here and get one right. Play was ruled, a forward pass. It was a shovel pass, incomplete. Well, close, but that's all right. They got half of it right. Yeah. Yeah, Max saying now that ain't right. Max saying, you know what? I've never had to send anything into the Big 12 office film-wise to right. talk about officiating. I think probably I'll do it look, this week. The catch, the steal, Kept it the out interception, pads, did not it hit the ground. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, when it was 21 nothing, I was saying they were the third best team. But, you know, now Texas and them are probably tied for second. Right? <laughs> third down and nine. <laughs> Hickson back in there, the running back spot. Bishop, some pressure for the first time, and down he goes. Jermaine Anderson, don't give me an interception, give me a sack. That's right, true freshman out of Texas City. Texas showing he wants to play more and more, and he has more and more in this half. And he's made some nice plays. I'll continue to say, though, that Kansas State has lost their focus in this game. Texas is not going to get as much pride out of finishing this second half as they did against UCLA last year. Now, Mack... Last I week. For last week, yes. Uh, Mac, I think, is just trying to survive these two games and get against a few people he maybe can match up in town a little bit more. Last time Garcia had the wind with him and hit 178 yards. He'll go into the wind here. Beauty. Still got a great kick. Rogers Mitchell backpedaling again and has to let it go again. Wow, two unbelievable kickers. One a putter, one a kicker on this team. And the Texas native playing for Kansas State, a 67-yarder that time. James Garcia out of Victoria, Texas. One of the Texas natives on this team. Look at his average today and a 78-yarder. He says he was so little when they started to put his fingers in the form of the Texas Longhorn when he was growing up as a baby. He was probably sucking his thumb on the same hand at the same time. And yet ends up at Kansas State, and he is booming kicks today. 13 minutes left, 35-7. The Wildcats in front. Ricky Williams, Jack Cobb. Oh, my. He's a heat-seeking missile. He really is. And, you know, the scouting report from, a report from Mike Stoops was, Texas likes to run the sweep from split backs. Mike Kelly said, I remember my game plan. They like to run the sweep. Goes inside the blockers that time. Doesn't go around the end and catches it from behind. What a player. Ricky Williams may be headed for a career low game, the way things are going today. He may, he may be passing guys the other way. In the other direction. Been a tough day. He might have to get last week's list up. Eight rushes for no yardage or loss. Play action. Apple Swarmed under. Howard's been coming after him all day. Finally got it. 11 sacks last year was just a half sack shy of tying the school record. This kid is not only pretty good size, he's fast. Well, this time he goes through two guys, good coverage downfield. Roger Raisler was the one left guard that had him. And, you know, they lined Darren Howard up all over. And in normal situations, defensive tackle in the nickel slot. He's tough to find, he's tough to block. 6'4", 270. down the middle. Got some of the yards back. Ball loose. That's a turnover. That ball was caught and then free. I think Jeff Kelly is the guy that got the hit. And the man holding the football is Lamar Chapman. Kelly's halfway already on the bench. He's so sure it's a fumble. Kelly goes out one way, reads the eyes of Applewhite. There's the catch. Well, here comes number eight. Ball's out before the knees come on the ground. That's a fumble. At least it should be. And it is. What a defense. And what a linebacker. Kelly is the number one of nine junior 
junior college players that are starting for this for these teams either on offense or defense only a two-year player for this team but one of the great players to the line of scrimmage now the 23 yard line for the kansas state offense again they've already scored three times today the offense that is the defense has scored seven and the special teams have scored seven accounting for the 35 on the board for the Wildcats. This guy's thrown one and run in one today. And a first and 10 now at the 23-yard line. They get down in that red zone. They don't miss much. Bishop going to throw deep to the corner. Man is there. Got him. Touchdown, McDonald. Holy cow. 23 yards. Michael Bishop to Darnell McDonald. He can throw the ball 93 yards. This time he only threw it 43 yards, but it was right on the money. I want to show you something. Players appreciate talent. This time McDonald says, I'm open by a crack over at Irvis Hill. The ball is thrown right there. Now watch Jermaine Anderson, the defensive end for Texas, after the throw. Michael Bishop throws that one, and you're going to see some guy who appreciates talent from Texas. Extra point to make it 42 to 7, and the hold was mishandled. The ball loose. Texas trying to find the handle, and they're going to be dragged down. Irvis Hill, I think, is the guy that blocked it. The snap appeared to be a little bit low, and the hold was never there for James Garcia to have Gramatica kick it. And so it's 41 to 7. Michael Bishop rolls one way, throws back, gets hit, gets back up. And just as he gets back up, Anderson says, give me five. That was a hell of a throw. I feel so much better with my hat on. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford Torres. Ford, built to last. By Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. AT&T, it's all within your reach. And by Coors Light, Frost Brew, to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. And that only happened to me one time in my career. Through a pass, I got a high five from a defender. It was Tom Jackson from the Denver Broncos. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> no, no. I didn't get close at all. I was going At the eight-yard line, Nunez fields the kick. And he goes out to about the 23. And a little pushing and shoving after the play. Kansas State, well, those first two opponents so overmatched, but now... With a win coming up today, then it's Northeast Louisiana. you got to assume they're 4-0 as they go to Boulder on October 10th. Yeah, and, you know, what a nice schedule. The, the big games are pretty well spaced out. You know, at Colorado, the Nebraska way down here, and then, of course, you've got the Missouri game. Missouri's probably a, a, going to be a key game for this football team, mm -hmm. but I don't think this team is going to be afraid of anyway. Bill Snyder has this team ready. Well, he is a guy that stays focused on football just about uh, every minute of every day. We'll talk more about that as we go here with 11.09 left, 41 to 7. Kelly's thinking about a blitz, and he brings it. Applewhite throws a strike. A nice pass again, and it's out to McGarrity, who's already got a career high, and now he's got 142 yards on five catches. So Wayne's had a good game. Bill Schneider doesn't spend a lot of time about anything except football. They put in long hours here, the coaching staff. You asked him, you said, are you a workaholic? And he said, no, I don't really think so. And I said, Coach, do you have any hobbies? Do you like fishing or golf, whatever? He said he hated fishing, right? Yeah, he didn't like fishing. Tried that once with his son. He said, I can't sit there on the bank and do nothing. But he said, golf. Yeah. Golf, I love golf. He says, I love golf. How many times did he play? I said, he said, three times he says he's played in the last five years. You and I thought he was going to say three times last week. Right. Three Walker, times in the last five like years. Brad, I love golf. I played three <laughs> times in the last five years. You talk about golf. they got a management yeah. course here in golf, in horticulture. First degree will be earned in the year 2000. they got a thing called a mini Rizitron. Yeah. It's a sensor deal they put down on the ground. It checks the root growth of the, <laughs> of the grass out on the golf. But look at this. I need this guy in my yard. That's right. I mean, they put it together here. That looks just like the map we used to get here. <laughs> golf course management. I love you that. You know, I, I love Bill playing golf three times in five years. He's still got the same sleeve of balls he got when he came here. Second down and seven. 
Applewhite, he oh, gets man. hit by Kelly. The ball rolls harmlessly out near the line of scrimmage. How about that? The worst of that, even worse than that, he gets railed by Kelly, and Oaks knocks down the pass. This Kansas State defense reminds me of those great Oklahoma defenses or Miami defenses where the linebackers were so fast and cleaned up so many plays and the front four just get in there and disrupt things. It's amazing to watch these guys play. What did you say at the beginning? Disrupt up front? Disrupt, clean up, and mop up the mess afterwards. Wow. That's about what they do. That's their three lines of defense. Third down and seven. From the shotgun. Just under ten minutes left. Applewhite. Throws almost picked off and then almost caught. Nice shot. Carter got a hand on it and so did Jamel Thompson. One more story about Major Applewhite when Mac Brown got the job at Texas. Major got on the internet that internet that night and started emailing the quarterbacks at UNC to try to get a head start on the offense that Coach Brown was going to wow. bring to Texas. That's a guy that wants to play football. Nope, no doubt about it. Punt coming up from Stockton. He's punted well today, too, with the exception of one that he hit too far, and David Allen took 93 the other way, and one he shanked off the side of his foot. This one he hits a mile in the air. This is perfect, unless Allen still has a chance. David Allen, here he goes. Cuts to the outside, the punter to beat. Down the sideline and out of bounds. And comes up limping a little bit, but still got over 40 yards on the return. What a punt returner this kid is. Some guys just have the knack. My next door neighbor, Billy White Shoes Johnson, had it. This kid's got it. 41 to 7, Kansas State. Coming up, college football next Saturday. Doubleheader, noon Eastern, many of you see Michigan State and Michigan. USC and Florida State at 3.30 start. We'll be in Cornhusker land for the Huskies and the Cornhuskers. Number nine against number three. There's all the games. Check the game that you'll get in your area or what you can pick up on pay-per-view. Well, there's this guy's a player, this Jermaine Anderson. You gotta get like, him in the lineup full time. True freshman, 6'3. Out of Texas City, Texas, and he's raising some yeah. havoc right now in the Kansas like, State backfield. I would like to play against him last year when he no. was in high school. <laughs> David Allen, who limped off after that last punt return, they're wrapping his ankle on the sideline. They're right also now. covering him up because Bill Snyder does not allow anything for injuries to get out. Right. No injury reports from the sideline, so. It's the Scotty Bowman of college football. <laughs> you gotta be a hockey fan to understand that one. Marlon Charles, he comes in at the tailback spot, and he dances his way inside the 35. Good look and run, Quentin Jammer, and again, it's a bad sign when your safety's making all the tackles. 16-yard pickup on the play. <laughs> Hand the ball off deep, you're down to your third string tailback. Follow another one of those big pulling linemen this time. Make a nice move and have the safety tackle, yeah, that's a good one. You know, that was Brian Hanley, number 73, 325 pounds. Believe it or not, he started his college career as a basketball player, a point guard, Xavier. Yeah, point guard. They weighed about 250 then. Charles with another good looking run, and McGowan, the other safety, makes the tackle. Pete Gillum recruited him as a point guard. And Pete's a tough guy. It must Jeez. have been a tough point guard. <laughs> so another nine yard pickup, second down and a yard coming up for Marlon Charles. Charles also a senior out of nearby Kansas City. Couple hours down the road. In there for Hickson, who got his knee bumped earlier. And then Allen, who came up hobbling after that punt return. So he's showing well here as the third string tailback. And motion on the left side. Looked like Justin Swift, the tight end, flinched a little bit over there in his stand up style of the tight ends of Kansas State, a la Iowa. Yep. Phil Snyder, of course, was the offensive coordinator for Hayden Fry. Look at those stats from Michael Bishop. Remember, he was a 42% passer a year ago. He comes close to completing over 50% of his passes this year. They're going to have a, a diamond, not just an athlete. A little bit of a 
piece of tape, almost like a little yeah. mini cast on that one uh, ring finger on his right hand. He dislocated that a week ago Tuesday in practice. 41-7, to Michael Bishop still in the football game. i, I got to believe this is his last uh, series, yeah. so I think he's going to try to put one on. You know, uh, this is the position where they like to run that rub-off fade inside. Texas has gone to his zone look, though. They're going to keep it on the ground at Charles. Sidestepping tacklers put down by D.D. Lewis at the 25. Short of the first down by a couple. And we're down to 7.25 remaining in the ballgame. DeAndre DeWayne Lewis, that's the D.D., and uh, he didn't even know who D.D. Lewis was. Some of these young guys don't know the great linebackers of yesteryear in the NFL, and D.D. was a Dallas Cowboy for 13 or 14 years. But he said, I understand he's a pretty good one, and uh, yeah. I don't mind being mentioned with him. <laughs> Of course, the backup quarterback for Kansas State is Adam Helm. They're trying to redshirt Jonathan Beasley. Charles spinning around, and down he goes, and got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Speaking of pro football, don't forget your exclusive home for primetime NFL. Sunday night, 8-15 Eastern on ESPN. It's the Eagles against the Arizona Cardinals. Then Monday night on ABC Sports. It's Monday Night Football Live at the new time, 8 o'clock Eastern. The Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. That's your twin bill. Sunday night on ESPN, Monday night on ABC. Fourth down and a long one coming up, and Kansas State will go for it. The give to Charles, and he's got it. And he's down to the 20. Can't dance around on that one, Marlon. Fourth and one, you better not dance in the hole. You better pick up your first down, then do the dancing, or you'll be dancing somewhere besides Manhattan. <laughs> he only played six games last year due to injuries. At 183 yards on the season today, getting a lot of spot duty. He actually came in as the uh, top rusher. He had 138 yards coming into this one, but Hickson has gone well past that over the 300-yard mark with his performance today. And now Marlon... Doing the cleanup duty, down to six minutes. Next drive, we'll see Junior Snyder, backup quarterback. They keep going like this, there might not be another drive. They take all that time in the huddle and get five yards of pop. Play action, Bishop flares it out to his hand, Swift. Swift's got it down, first and goal at the nine yard line. Justin. An 11-yard reception. Justin was the backup, second-team All-Big 12 tight end last year. Justin said, I'm open all the time. It's just Michael doesn't throw me the ball. <laughs> Michael's got to spread it around, and Michael's got to do some running with it, too. Only so much ball out there. Bishop has put on quite a show again today without even trying to. That's how good he is. Charles, left side. Pretty good at the six and bounced down to the four. Lewis hit him first. Dusty Renfro cleaned up. You got to believe people will take notice if Kansas State throws on a little 49 to seven score on that thing when people are looking at highlights and looking at scores. That will get noticed and people will forget those two opening games. You know, I really believe that Bill Snyder is very, very smart to do what he does to play those two opening games. I mean, they're almost used as preseason games. He gets his team ready. He looks at a lot of people, gets his special teams ready, which is really the toughest thing to start out with, and then he goes into the heart of his schedule. Mm -hmm. Second down. They like and goal. And a timeout taken by Kansas State. We'll take one as well with 4.48 left, 41 to 7 Wildcats. 41 to 7 with just under five minutes left. Kansas State out in front and in control. Bill Snyder's team on its way to a 3 and 0 oh start. And Michael Bishop likes to go to the fade out here, the bump down. They'll bump down and go to the fade to the outside on this play. Second and goal just outside the four. To the slot man. Right to bump down on it and throw the fade. Well, they might be changing things up at the line here. Texas thinking about a blitz. Texas may have jumped in. I think they're going to go closer to the goal line for the next snap. Look like Texas. Nice angle, guys. Jumped in there. Defense, offside, contact before the snap. You can almost see Michael Bishop goal. salivating the play before. If time permits, don't forget, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country with John and Todd. 
some near surprises and some surprises, as well, the, there is every week. The fans here got, had a huge cheer when they saw Missouri ahead of Ohio State. Of course, they don't want Missouri to do real well, real well but they would sure like Ohio State to lose right. and open up a spot for Kansas State to move up. But the Buckeyes seem to have come back. A lot of purple in the stands here today, and they're going to be on their feet again if their team could go the last couple of yards to the end zone. Charles all along the top. Charles, two-yard touchdown run. They got so many weapons, and even when a couple of them get banged up a little bit, they just bring in another one. Well, it all goes with the point guy, number seven right there. They have to defense him. The game plan was brilliant. Start out with a lot of quarterback draws, establish the fact that we have three running backs in the backfield, even though we have two wide receivers. You have to stop Bishop on the run and the pass, and then every, everything seems to open up after that. Remember a bad snap last time on the extra point. This one's perfect. Grammaticus kick is as well. And it's 48 to 7. That's right. 441 left. Well, interesting, I think, Big 12 Conference this year. Colorado is better than advertised. And they do not have, they have a very favorable schedule. They do not play Texas or Texas A&M. You know, they play uh, this team at home. So they, I, I think they're sitting very nicely. Rick Neuheisel might have a team that he feels good about. And he thinks now that they got their wake-up call a little bit last week that they'll be a little more focused. Yes. You know, Nebraska is always going to be tough. They had the week off, and they meet Washington in a game Gary and I will have for you next week. So it's going to get interesting in this conference. Oklahoma was in the going in today, 2-0. First time since under uh, uh, John Blake that they've been 2-0. So a few teams in the Big 12 doing well. Speaking off of Kansas City, number 10, Martin Gramatica. Gramatica will kick. Also, Nebraska, look at the Nebraska's end of their schedule. They go against Missouri and Texas. Then they have Iowa State, which is probably one they can blow through. But then they finish up with Can Kansas State and Colorado. So that's a tough finish yep. for the Nebraska team. Gramatica high and short on this one. Way up there in the air. Texas better get on it. This happened last week. Kansas State oh, got on one of these a week ago. That That's a free ball. Alphonse Gaston right there. <laughs> Chad Irwin <laughs> jumped up there and snared it. Ricky Williams, 45 yards rushing on 24 attempts. You know, in the last 15 games, as you take a look at the list, Ricky, we thought was going to maybe move way up past Marinero today if he had a huge game. Right. He's uh, in that number 18 spot and still may pass Terry Miller before this one's over. But in the last 15 games, the Kansas State defense has only given up 100-yard ground game. That's right. And that was Amon Green of Nebraska. Had 193 last year in the only game they lost. So when they don't give up 100 to the big star on the other side, they don't lose. And that's what's happening today. Subs are in. give Ricky Brown and Ricky got it out to, to the 36 yard line the other Ricky and Ricky Williams didn't go up in the touchdown list either he still got Anthony Thompson of Indiana in his sights with uh, 10 more to go to tie and 11 to pass him and that one's not going to be added to today either unless he breaks one here in the waiting moments we're down to four minutes in the game he has not had a run, I don't believe, of over seven yards today, has he? I, I don't think so, but I know he's had a loss of more than seven yards. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here Holy he is. Cow, here comes another one. He might lose some more. That's a they will swarm after you. The Purple Swarm, the lynch mob, as you said, they call them around here. They're so different than what you remember. Really, the legacy of... Uh, Bill Snyder and Stoops and everybody coming from Iowa where they sat in that soft zone, four deep look. This is attack, 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 and boy, they are good at it. There's Coach Stoops. His team has got some outstanding talent and speed. Ohio State has beaten Missouri despite the scare. Applewhite, whoops, that one just came off his hand. Well, he's going to hear from the Kansas State fans, but I think he, as you said early, has played about as well as you can expect a young guy to come in and play. That was the old air ball, <laughs> air ball. 
Fourth down. And David Allen, who went out limping after that 42-yard return on the last punt, is not in there. Lamar Chapman will take his spot. Right now, David Allen saying, now, Lamar, now don't spoil it. Don't That's do right. it. You know, don't run for one against <laughs> me because I want them to all think it's just me. Well, Lamar has run for one before. He's got a 94-yarder to his credit. Bad punts are good punts. He's going to take it on the hop at the six. And he goes down at about the eight, maybe the nine-yard line. Was returned by so we're down to the last three minutes of this one. Michael Bishop, we assume we have seen the last of yeah, his numbers today. I think they will make today. a change. I don't think there's any doubt about that. 14 of 20 for 182 yards. A couple of touchdowns, 41 yards on the ground, and another score. So a Bishop-like day, without a doubt. Well, and now Adam Helm will take the helm. Actually a little bit out of character, Brad. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there's no way Bill Snyder will figure that this guy will be able to keep up that type of passing percentage all year. It's. I think he will be effective. He doesn't have to have that high of a percentage mm -hmm. to do it. So Helm takes over at quarterback here in the final three minutes. And to give to Charles, who just scored on the last drive. And he's out near the 10 yard line. Got a couple. You know, there's Michael's numbers we were just talking about. Two on two in the air and one on the ground. Hard to believe he can throw the ball with the velocity he does. It's not like he's six foot five or anything like that. You know, he's maybe a six one, 200, 200 pounds, but he has. Big hands and seems to really get the whip on the ball. Never really got loose with his feet today. Yep, and even with that, he still ended That's up with right. 41 yards. He rushing. established the game plan though with him. Right. Helm on the give. Charles trying to cut back. Got to line of scrimmage, maybe the 11. Casey Hampton in on the stop. Bill Snyder's team on its way to. Yet another victory over a non-ranked opponent at home. This will be 42 straight they've won at home against non-ranked opposition. And their winning streak will go to 11 games. And that's a school record. So every time they play, it seems like another record drops. And when you got talent like David Allen and those kind of things, uh, every play you kind of hold your breath and wait for somebody to make a big play. Well, they made now, enough of them today. Yeah, it's not like he was trying to break Babe Ruth's record. Well, though, that's you know? right. He didn't have a lot of good records. <laughs> that's true. Helm goes down. Hampton got it. You know, you talk about around campus, we did this earlier. They got the Green Science Department in the College of Horticulture. The department's the only one of its kind in the nation. This is a, this is a bakery here. That guy looks like he's had a few loaves of bread. Schnellenberger Hall, bakery science and management degree you can get. They have frozen dough experiments for retail stores. And I mean, uh, you know, what comes out of there a few minutes later, I guess that's at about 400, right? You pull that baby out and you got your grains. You got your grains. We I got, got ours. Yeah, we I got, got ours. right here. We got to take this with us now. We're going to have sandwiches on the plane on the way out of here. Stuff smells, smells great. Right. I'm smells trying to cut down on my carbs, yeah, so right. I don't know if I'm going to eat the whole loaf or not. Down here, final 45 seconds. And the officials whistle it dead before the punt. Boy, Bill Snyder, the job he's done now in his 10th year. Dead ball, delay yeah. the game, offense, half the distance to the goal. When they ended the 1980s, their record was one win, 36 losses, and one tie. And since he took over, 69, 37, and one. Not bad, huh? Here they go. Here they go. Not bad at all. One, 36, and one. Mm -hmm. That was the 80s. How the do you 90s have, enough, have been much nicer. How do you have enough guts to take a program over like that? Oh, man. You're not kidding. Punt fielded by Hodges Mitchell. And flags down. They're probably going to call again that... Uh, they didn't give enough room to make the catch. And sometimes you just got to let them go, guys. We've got 34 seconds left in a game that has nothing left to it other than the final, the Mac, final gun. Mac Brown right now is glad to be through UCLA and Kansas State. Yep. <laughs> now sure. we can look at the rest of the schedule and say, all right, here we go from here. We played our two preseason games. And uh, from now on, we're expecting wins, not just moral wins. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we'll see more and more of those true freshmen playing. Look down at our I, I spotter like the board. They got nine guys just on defense that are true freshmen. Yeah. I like the strategy Bill Snyder uses with playing teams that he can beat in non-conference games. 33 seconds remaining, 48 to 7. We got a timeout.
team to just seven points. So they're scoring in bunches and they're not giving up much. That's the story for fourth ranked Kansas State. And they hustle out Ross Snyder, the coach's son, into the tailback position. And Helm takes a knee. This one's over. Kansas State cruises. 48 to 7 is the final. Bill Schneider's team wins their 11th in a row. Their 42nd in a row against non-ranked opponents at home. As the two coaches meet at midfield, 48-7 Wildcats win.